thank you for being a part of Legacy Conference 2022, hosted by the incredible Dr. Nii Borire. Dr. Nii is a foremost leadership expert in the area of neuroleadership, neurochange, and neuroperformance for business executives and career professionals. Some of Dr. Nee's life-changing materials are the Brain, Mind and Change series, which consists of 10 modules from Dr. Nee and other insightful facilitators. Visit legacyconsults.com.au forward slash products to get yours at a 50% discount. Also available is the Neuroscience of Peak Performance by Dr. Nee and one of Australia's leading neuroleadership coach, Kristen Hansen. Visit legacyconsults.com.au forward slash product to get a 50% discount. You can also get three months exclusive one-on-one -on -one coaching with Dr. Nii. Or you can choose to join a group coaching call. Visit legacyconsults.com.au forward slash products to book your slot. Finally, you can get Dr. Nii's books, Navigating Change, Victoria Erserta and Hager on Amazon. And you can pre-order your copy of his new books, Changing You and Overcoming. All products and materials are available at a 50% discount only during this conference. This includes a special masterclass that Dr. Nee and Kristen Hansen will be hosting on the 20th of September, titled The Neuroscience of Leadership and Influence. Visit neeboriray.com forward slash neuroperformance for more information and to book your slot. You don't want to miss it. Hi everyone, we are live! Woo! I am excited, I am pumped, because I know that today will be an awesome day. This session will be an awesome session. If you're watching us right now, do me a favor, let us know where you're watching from. Put a comment in that comment section right now. Let us know where you're watching from. We want to know where you're watching from. I care. I care to know where you're watching from. Put it in the chat. I can see people from Nigeria. I can see people from Aotearoa, New Zealand, where I am currently. I'm pumped. I'm excited. Welcome from Benin City, Nigeria, from Abuja, Nigeria, from Sydney, Australia, from New Zealand in the land of Aotearoa. I see a lot of people from Ogun State, Nigeria, from uh, uh, Auckland, Auckland. Auckland West, isn't that amazing? From Johannesburg, from Dubai, from Ghana, from, from everywhere all over the world. Manchester, UK, from Ghana. I see Ghana again. I see UK. It looks like the UK people are winning. Please put, 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 put comments up. Let us know where you're watching from. Don't let these UK people win. I see people from Nigeria again. Yes, awesome. Norway, woo! We have someone from Norway, all the way from Norway. That's amazing. From Benin. Republic as well from Ethiopia. Well done. Welcome, welcome, welcome from Melbourne, Australia. I am so excited and I know you are too because over the last few days, we've been enjoying some amazing, amazing inspirational words from wonderful, wonderful speakers, people who have literally shown us dimensions of what legacy should be about. I don't think this conference will be forgotten in any hurry. Please do me a favor. Wherever you're watching from right now, just so that you can make someone jealous. If you've been a part of session one, session two, session, you know, three, four, all right, and five at the VIP session this morning, I want you to just type one sentence that has stayed with you since you heard it. One sentence that has stayed with you since you heard it. Yes, yes, yes. Anyone, anyone, anyone. I feel like flipping my nose and making you all jealous, especially for those who have not been here since session one. Tell us, what have you, what have you heard that will stay with you for a very long time? I will never forget that first session from uh, Mrs. A. Jumake Adenowa. Oh my goodness, that woman literally brought the roof down. Wait, 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 wait. Before we share what we are learning at all, do me a favor. I want you to like this video right now. Exactly. Like this video right now, whatever you're watching it on, whether you're watching it on LinkedIn, whether you're watching it on YouTube, or maybe you're listening to us on Mixler. Shout out to those listening on Mixler. We love you, and we know that you're having a great time right now. So do me a favor, like this video, like this audio, wherever you're listening or watching from, right this minute, so that it helps the algorithm to show it to more people. Not only that, if there's anyone you genuinely love, someone you love so dearly, that you love them to the bones, like you cannot let them miss whatever it is you are enjoying, do me a favor, copy this link right now. 
I'm giving you the permission. I'm giving you the right. Copy this link, the Misla link, the LinkedIn link, the YouTube link. Copy it right now and send it off to that person. Wait, 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 wait. I'm about to scream. I want to scream. I feel like screaming. You know why? John Maxwell is here. <laughs> Let me tell you guys a story. Just about two years ago, roughly about two years ago, Dr. Nee and I were on the phone and we were just having a friendly chat like we normally would. And I remember we were saying to each other, we were saying one day we will bring people like John Maxwell. T.D. Jakes, uh, and we started mentioning all of this name, that we will bring them to our very own conference to bless people's lives. We were just saying it. We were just, we were just, <laughs> we were saying it over the phone. But look at us today. Yeah, I feel like screaming. This is, this is a dream come true. And I want you not just to be you know, selfish about this. I want you to copy this right now. Copy the link right now. Send it on your, on your WhatsApp status. Put it on your Instagram status. Put it on your Facebook status. Put it on your Facebook timeline. Put it everywhere. People have got to listen. John is here. Tell them John is here. Put it there. Say, John is live right here now. Yes, because he is here. And you are about to listen to John Maxwell. So like this video right now. Share with someone that you love. Make sure that they, you know, and put it on your socials. Put it on your, take a screenshot. Feel free to take a screenshot. All right. And when John comes as well, too, I want you to take a screenshot because I'll be there. So make sure you take a you know, a very good one of me smiling, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, uh, Wendy will be there. We all will be there. We are amazing. So take a screenshot, send it to someone, all right, wherever you're watching from, you want, a, we want a lot of people to be a part of this. All right. People are started putting their lessons on and I'm so excited. Somebody said mentorship is caught rather than taught. Yes, that was from Mrs. A, live and direct. That, that's a very powerful one. Many people think mentorship is something that you, you know, you have to go to one class there about. Mm -mm -mm. It is caught and you have to serve your way into mentorship. Stephanie said, to be a master at anything, you must be a student of that thing. I remember that came directly from me in this, at the second session with DDK. It's been an amazing, amazing conference. Yes, any more lessons? 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 Yes, yes bring it up bring keep bringing them let's make people jealous people who have not been a part of this all this while yes let's make the character keeps you sustained i love that you cannot unlearn uh what you learn that's very powerful the tyranny of the ordinary i remember ddk saying that powerful listen to me if you have missed any session of this conference all you need to do on this platform where you're watching from, you need to subscribe to that channel and go back to those sessions. There are thousands of views on those sessions. So people keep, people keep coming back and watching them over and over and, and over again. And why shouldn't you do? So make sure you save those videos, bookmark them, put them in the playlist somewhere and keep watching them over and over again. This is unbelievably free. I mean, oh my goodness. I don't know how I feel right now. I just feel like jumping out of my own skin, but it's so exciting to be here. It's so exciting to be here. So please do me a favor. If you missed the VIP session, right? If you missed the VIP session, one thing that I need to let you know, very soon, Dr. Nee will be having a masterclass. Actually, let me, let me share that with you right now. So you get to see uh, 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 the details of the masterclass. On your screen right now is a masterclass that Dr. Nee will be having very soon, very soon. You can see September the 20th, all right? And guess what? It's valued at $499, but he's giving it away for $99. That's Dr. Nee. He's a very good friend of mine and I know him. His heart is, he can give anything almost away for free, but just so that you can make a commitment for what you're about to get. Speaking about leadership and influence, the neuroscience of leadership and influence with one of Australia's uh, 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 neuroscientific expert, all right, neuro leadership expert rather, sorry, in Kristen Hansen. Guess what? If you register right now, while you're on this conference, you're getting it for $99. I don't know what will happen tomorrow, <laughs> right after this conference. So go and get that right now. And guess what? When you register for this, there's a bonus for you, all right? And that bonus is that you're also going to get a recording of the VIP session that we, some other people paid $99 for. You're going to be getting the recording as well. So why don't you hurry right now? Hurry right now to that link on your screen um, and go register for the neuroscience of leadership and influence with Dr. Nii Boriri and Kristen Hansen. I promise you that session will leave you inspired, all right? I can see a lot of lessons still coming through, but um, uh, we're ready because John is backstage and we can't wait to have John 
on. All right, but let me read one or two more lessons. Leadership is not a job. Mrs. Jumakia Dinova said that powerful. You will be remembered for the problem you created or the problem you solved. I remember FD saying that. So go on right now to neebore.com slash neuroperformance. That's the link to register for that masterclass. So you can also claim your own recording of the VIP session. The VIP session today was hot. We planned it for three hours. We ended up spending almost four hours. It was hot. It was multidimensional. It was inspiring. So in case you missed it and you want to have the whole thing as a package, both the masterclass and the VIP session, well, you can uh, might as well just pay $99 for it. What a bargain. I think that's the best bargain you can get. So go ahead and get it right now. All right. Somebody said, imagine being an open door for people associated with you and your family, even when you are gone. Positive legacy. I remember Feladroti said that the tools for vision and the visionary leadership is from God and it takes time, pursuit and mastery to convert it into ideas. Oh my God. If you miss session one, if you miss session two, if you miss session three, if you miss session four, I don't know what you're doing with your life. You need to just look at these lessons right now and go and watch the recording. All right. I wouldn't take too much of your time. I promise I would not take too much of your time because we are ready to go right now to John Maxwell. But before we go to John C. Maxwell, I want you to do me one more favor. If you are yet to share this live stream, if you're yet to share this live stream, you're betraying, you're breaking my heart. You're breaking my heart. I want to see thousands of people be a part of this dream come true. So right now, share this. In fact, literally hustle people. Go and tell them that I just don't want you to miss this blessing. John Maxwell is live right now. And here is the link. Put it on your church WhatsApp group. I, I, I'm, I'm giving you the permission right now. Put it on your church WhatsApp group. Put it on your mentorship WhatsApp group. Put it everywhere let them roll in in their hundreds and their thousands because something huge is about to happen you can tell from my excitement I have, I, you probably haven't seen me like this in a while but guess what the time has come to listen to the phenomenal leadership expert himself in person of john c maxwell but before that all right we're just going to have you learn one more time about some of Dr. Nee's products and then we'll get right into it. Thank you for being a part of Legacy Conference 2022 hosted by the incredible Dr. Nee Borire. Dr. Nee is a foremost leadership expert in the area of neuroleadership, neurochange and neuroperformance for business executives and career professionals. Some of Dr. Nee's life-changing materials are the Brain, Mind and Change series which consists of 10 modules from Dr. Nee and other insightful facilitators. Visit LegacyConsults.com.au forward slash products to get yours at a 50% discount. Also available is the Neuroscience of Peak Performance by Dr. Nii and one of Australia's leading neuroleadership coach, Kristen Hansen. Visit LegacyConsults.com.au forward slash products to get a 50% discount. You can also get three months exclusive one-on-one -on -one coaching with Dr. Nii. Or you can choose to join a group coaching call Visit LegacyConsults.com.au forward slash products to book your slot. Finally, you can get Dr. Nee's books, Navigating Change, Victoria Erserta, and Hager on Amazon. And you can pre-order your copy of his new books, Changing You and Overcoming. All products and materials are available at a 50% discount only during this conference. This includes a special masterclass that Dr. Nee and Kristen Hansen will be hosting on the 20th of September, titled The Neuroscience of Leadership and Influence. Visit neeboriray.com forward slash neuroperformance for more information and to book your slot. You don't want to miss it. Neil, hasn't this been a great legacy 2022 so far? Yeah. What yeah, rich local. speakers, yeah, great content. Wow. I, how about you? I'm blown away. Uh, yes, I, I'm really, really, you know, amazed by the diversity of thought and the depth of the value we're receiving right here. It's been a big blessing. Yeah. So, so well, I'm ex I'm also very excited for our next speaker. I can't tell you how how excited I am to for my next speaker because he's my friend and he's my mentor, uh, and we get to have him on with us today. So, Dr. Nee, I'm going to hand over to you just to tell our listeners, those that are viewing uh, visually uh, as well as audibly. I can't even get it out. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> who our next speaker is, and then I will do uh, a little introduction as well. So so over to you, Dr. Nee. Oh, wow. Well, this is a 
really, really big one. You know, if someone had told me that two years ago would have John C. Maxwell on our platform, I wouldn't have believed it. I remember Dr. Sam and I, we used to talk about us bringing John Maxwell to Australia we, and New Zealand, and we never knew that it was going to be virtually. At first, I still know that it would happen in person, but I'm so excited. And then I wouldn't knew that Wendy, when we we're having those coaching calls, you know, with the John Maxwell team, and then later, you know, when I was having the coaching sessions with you, that this would lead to the connection with John Maxwell. I'm really happy and delighted to be able to introduce John Maxwell to this platform, Legacy 2022. So John Maxwell is the number one New, uh, New York Times best-selling author. He's a speaker, a coach, and a leader who has sold more than 33 million books in over 50 languages. Wow. He has been called the number one leader in business and the most influential leadership expert in the world. His organizations, mainly the John Maxwell Leadership um, Company um, and the John Maxwell Leadership Foundation have translated his teachings into several languages, about 70 languages, and they've been used to train millions of leaders from every country in the world. He's a recipient of the Horatio Alga Award and the Mother Teresa Prize for Global Peace and Leadership from the Luminary Leadership Network. Dr. Maxwell also influences Fortune 500 CEOs, presidents of nations, and entrepreneurs worldwide. It's a great pleasure to have John C. Maxwell on this platform, Wendy. Yes, and so I now have the honor of introducing him from a personal perspective. I first met John in the pages of his book many, many years ago when my life was really spinning out of control. And if anybody knows my story, you'll know that it was. From his books, I realized that for my life to change, it needed to start with me. So he taught me that my past would not define my future, that my attitude, my action and self-leadership would be key, that I could create the legacy that I wanted to leave. Well, 10 years ago, I joined John's team and it really took a great giant leap of faith for me to join. Why? Because, because would the man of his books be the same? Would he still have the same heart of care and strong moral character? Mm. Could I trust what I read about to be real? But what I found was a man whose private and public face were the same, a man that I could trust, a man who lives out what he believes, a man who cares for me, encourages me and cheers me on on a regular basis. When I shared my story on stage with him in Orlando, um, he came up to me afterwards because I shared my story on the power of attitude. And that's one of the most important values for John. He came up to me afterwards and he gently took my face in his hands. And he told me how very proud he was of me, proud like a proud dad. I'll be forever grateful that I can also be part of John's legacy and carry that forward. Please join me in welcoming my dear friend and my mentor, Mr. John C. Maxwell. Hi, John Maxwell here. I am so delighted to be with Legacy 2022. And Dr. Sam, Dr. Nia and Wendy are just beautiful people who really desire more than anything else for you to have a legacy in your life and to take the values that really change lives and pass it on to others. And so today I wanna to talk to you about a uh, legacy. And the title of my lesson is A Leader's Lasting Value is Measured by Succession. I think that the best thing that a leader can leave people is a legacy. Other people to fulfill the vision and to live out the values that that founder has started with. I can still remember in America, in the States, there was a coach that was extremely well known by the name of John Wooden. He coached at the University of UCLA, a basketball coach. In fact, he was voted the greatest coach of the last century. He was just a tremendous man, a tremendous teacher, and he was my mentor for many, many years. And I can remember um, he was in probably about 93, 94. He lived to be 99. In fact, the last thing that he did before he passed away is he wrote the foreword to my book, Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You Learn. And so I was, I was with Coach. I had uh, him at a conference I was hosting. A couple thousand people were in the audience. And I asked him the question, you know, I said, Coach Wooden, uh, when we're talking about his legacy, what, what, do, what do you want to be known for? 
when you leave this world. And it was very interesting because his basketball teams won 10 national championships. To this day, he has had the most successful basketball teams ever in college basketball. So when I asked him what he wanted to be remembered for, I think all of us assumed he'd say, well, you know, I, I did coach uh, 10 different teams to national championships in America. And so when I asked him that question, very quickly he said, well, I, I can tell you what I don't want to be known for. He said, I don't want to be known for winning all the national championships that we've won. And there was an audible gasp in the entire crowd as they went, <sighs> I mean, it was kind of like, we thought for sure that would be what he wanted his legacy to be. And then this incredible teacher, wise man said, I really, I want to be known by my, by my players as a, as a coach that helped them prepare for life and that they did life better, not just basketball, but they did life better because of me. And he talked about just the values that he'd lived that he'd wanted to pass on to them. And that was a very important day for me because as I listened to him, I, I thought to myself, a legacy has to be more than just something that I that you know that I I I leave with people. It's it, it's something that uh, that I give people that I put within them. It, it's almost like I, I didn't I didn't just give you this bottle of water. That's my legacy, but I poured into you something that made you a, a better person. And then I was privileged also to be mentored by Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, up into the 90s was known as the number one management guru in the world. And I remember after one of my three-day sessions with a group of about 20 of us, we were wrapping it up. And, and I remember him, him looking at us and saying, now, leaders, remember, there is no success without a successor. And the most important thing you can do is, is leave a legacy. And I can still remember my conversation with Jack Welch, who's a neighbor of mine here in Florida before he passed away, who was probably recognized when he was the CEO of General Electric as the greatest CEO of that day. And I remember him looking and saying to me, John, don't put your legacy in organizations, put your legacy in people. And it was from him that I got the term, I want to have legs for my legacy. You know, the legs are people and the legs move. And, 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 and that's what I want to do. Because I'm a person of faith, I'm going to do something that I usually don't do in these teachings. In fact, I put it in just for you. But I want to give you legacy awareness for just a second. And, and there are three, there are just three things I want to read to you. The first thing I want you to know is that uh, you have a, a destiny to fulfill. Psalm 139, 16. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I had even lived one day. Wow. You have a destiny to fulfill. Secondly, you have a contribution to make, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is, and everyone gets in on it, and everyone benefits. And thirdly, you have a legacy to leave, 2 Timothy 2, 2, and the instructions that you heard from me along with my witnesses transmit and entrust them as a deposit to reliable and faithful people who will be competent and qualified to reach others. So what I want you to understand in the faith perspective, of God's perspective, you have a destiny to fulfill, you have a contribution to make, and you have a legacy to leave. So let's talk about it. How do we develop a legacy culture? You know, culture is all about behavior. You know, vision is is what we see, but culture is what we do. So how do you how do you and I develop in our company, in our organization, on our team? How do we develop a legacy culture? To teach this, I, I'm going to share with you three pictures, okay? And and these three pictures will just visually help you understand what is needed in your life 
to have the legacy culture that you want to leave. And the first picture is the picture of a clock. And, and the clock, as I look at it, asks me a question. And, and that, that question it asks me is, what are you doing? You see, we look at a clock dozens of times every day. And the reason we do that is because we have a schedule to fulfill and we got appointments to make and people to see. And, and so it, it the, that clock kind of keeps us doing the everyday essentials. I mean, you know, it, it, okay, at this time I need to be there to meet with them and I need to write this afternoon at two o'clock. It, and it, it keeps us on schedule that the clock is a reminder that we, we, we don't want to let this day pass without making it a worthwhile day and, and, and we want to prioritize our time. So when you see the picture of the clock and legacy, it's it's really talking about now, today. And I know we think of legacy as the future tomorrow, but but for right now, just let's stay right in the present. What am I doing right now at this moment to increase the legacy that I hope to have in my world? As you know, I teach the power of five, which is all about everyday essentials. And the power of five basically is told in the story that if you have a tree in your backyard and you want to cut it down, and if you have an ax and you go to that tree and you just swing five times every day, eventually that tree is going to fall. Now, that little simple story is just a beautiful example of what I call the everyday essentials. And so when people say, I want to make my day count, I, I've got this clock that's reminded me that today matters. I want to make my day count. I look at them and I say, okay, um, let's, let's go to the, the story of the tree. You see, the everyday essentials in that little story that I briefly gave you in 60 seconds was, number one, you need to know what you want to accomplish. In this story, I want to cut down a tree. The second thing you need to know is you need to have the right tool. What did I do every day? I went, went to my, my garage. I, I went to my my place where I have my tools, and I get an ax. And, and, and that's the right tool. It's sharp. It cuts wood. And, and, and I go over to that tree, and, and I, swing, I swing five times every, every day. I... I know what I want to accomplish. I, I have the right tool. Thirdly, I have to take action. Just because I have an ax and just because I know that I want to cut a tree down, that doesn't mean the tree is coming down. You see, I have to take action. I have to every day go out, pick up the ax, go to that tree, you have to take action, you have to swing five times. You can never take success and separate it from action. Action is the key to your success. It's, it's not good intentions that makes you successful at all. In fact, I know people that have great intentions, and they're not at all successful. You, you have to take those good intentions and turn them into good actions. And so that's why what, what in the story, what are they? That five times, five times, there's action. That, that, that Just five times every day, you're, you're whacking a little bit of that wood out of there. So you have to know what you want to accomplish. You have to have the right tool. You have to take action. Number four, you have to stay focused. I mean, what would happen is I went and picked up my ax, and on my way to the tree I wanted to cut down, I saw another tree, and I thought, you know what? I think I'll cut that down, too. And so instead of going to the tree I started with, I'm over here, and I'm I'm doing five swings at that tree, and and now you can tell we're going to be in, we got a problem, and, and I didn't stay focused, and Maybe the next day I say, well, there's a tree over here I need to do that with. And so I go hack away at it five times. Well, you know, eventually I'm not going to cut any trees down. I'm just going to have half a dozen trees that are scarred. It's because I, I didn't stay focused. What you focus on expands. So that clock, that, that picture of legacy is saying to me, John, you got to do the everyday essentials. You, you, today matters. So back to the story, I, I know what I want to accomplish, want to cut the tree down, got to have the right tool, got an ax, got to, hey, got to take action, just get over there and swing. We don't, have to, we don't have to swing at the tree all day. We just do five swings every day, but a, a little bit of action every day. Number four, we, we have to stay focused. And now 
the fifth everyday essential is is I have to be consistent. You know, in the story, what what word did you keep hearing? You you kept hearing every day, every day, every day, every day. You see, today matters, and, and life consists of a lot of every days doing the right thing. It's this is huge. Uh, consistency is so underrated, you know, and, and the reason I think that it's not appreciated and underrated so much is it, it takes so long. I mean, no one ever went to work for one week and showed up every day. And at the end of Friday, that somebody came up and said, Hey, Hey, we have a consistency award. We want to give you, you, you came to work for five straight days. You're amazing. No, no, no. You see, consistency is only ever rewarded on the back end. But when you think of your legacy, you've got to think of today, right now, because today matters. We have a tendency to over-exaggerate what we did yesterday. We have a tendency to overestimate what we can do tomorrow. And here's the challenge. We have a, also a problem of underestimating what we can accomplish right now. So if you want to have a great legacy tomorrow, you got to show up today. And today you have to be doing the everyday essentials. Every day you do those things. It's like me writing a book. People say, John, how do you have, how have you written 85, 86 books? Well, you know, I have I have my my five things, my everyday essentials. Every every day I read, every day I every day I every day I read, every day I think, every day I file, every day I ask questions, every day I write. Every day. Every day. And people say, well, John, you know, when you say every day, what do you mean by every day? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. I, I mean every day. You know, every day. I write every day. You say, John, when you're on vacation, I, you know, every, every day when I'm on vacation, I write. Every, every, hey, how about Christmas? I write on every Christmas day. And now, now listen to me carefully. I haven't said I write all day. I said I write every day. Consistency always trumps intensity. Never forget this. I know a whole bunch of people, they'll get intense and they'll just work hard for four or five days, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, boy, and then they quit. They'd have been much better to just take that ax and five times chop away at that. Just every day, every day. So what you need to do is you need to have these everyday essentials. You need to have this clock that reminds you that legacy is built one day at a time, one day. So don't despise the day, utilize that day. Well, let me give you a, another picture that really helps you with legacy, helps me at least. The second picture is a picture of a compass. Now, when you have the clock and you have that picture, the clock basically says, what, what are you doing now? But when you have a, a compass, the question the compass asks is, where are you going? Because when you think of a compass, people have, why, why do they have a compass? For direction, to, to know exactly which path that they should take. When it comes to legacy, the statement is that People will describe your life in one sentence. And then, since people are going to describe your life in one sentence, pick it now. You see what's amazing? When I see that compass, it reminds me that I need to be going in the right direction. And what I need to do is I need to be picking now what I want to have people say, you know, my memorial service. You, you don't want to die and then have people show up and they're trying to guess what you accomplished in your life. For me, my compass, uh, my mission, my, my path that I take basically can some be summed up in, in one sentence. And that is, I, I, I want to add value to leaders who multiply value to others. That's who I am. That's what I do. That's what I'm committed. That's me. Wow. I think it's very essential for you and me to have what I call, or what Simon Sinek calls, I love that. He, he, he said, everybody needs to have a just cause. 
and a just cause. It's, it's about the future. It's about the future. And, and it's about who you are. It's, it's the compass that, you know, this is where I'm going with my life. I committed my life to teach values because I believe that it's values that brings transformation to people's lives. And so I wrote a book called Change Your World, and it's all about how do I take good values and around a table, share and relate and connect with and, and add value to people to, to become people of values. You see, a just cause, Simon Sinek talks about that in his wonderful book, The Infinite Game. And a just cause stands for something. It, it, it's a positive just cause. It, it's it's affirmative and optimistic. What I've discovered is if you're mad at something and you don't like something, that anger gives you great passion, but that passion doesn't last. People that have a negative reason for their cause or passion seldom stay in the game very long because it emotionally wears them down. So a just cause is something that I just absolutely believe in that's that's got a, a sense of positivity to it. A just cause must be inclusive. It must be open to everybody. In, in fact, when we, we talk about our John Maxwell team and becoming a Maxwell certified leader, my gosh, we, we, we say, we want you all to come. We, we, we want the diversity. We want different people. We, we want you to fill in the gaps and make a difference and complete us and complement us. A just cause is service oriented. It's always for the benefit of someone else. It's you see, there's a difference between me wanting something from you and me wanting something for you. And when you live a just cause, you want something for people. I think that, again, is what's made our John Maxwell company so successful. Because when I started it, I mean, I was asked, I was asked, well, are you willing to give this your name? And I hesitated for a, a few weeks because I thought I've worked hard on building my name. Good Lord. What happens if I give my name to somebody that just foolishly doesn't live my values? And, and I had to really think that through. But but I, I gave I gave my name for this cause because this cause is service oriented. It, it's it's to help people to add value. People I said, I want my name to be connected with people to really make a difference with people. Just cause is is resilient. It will literally endure all the political, cultural, technological changes in, 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 in a culture. It really will. And it's idealistic. It, it's, it's, it's big. It's bold. To be honest with you, it's beautiful. It's big, bold, beautiful, and, and usually not even achievable. But that's okay because the cause, the mission, the purpose is, is worth what we're doing. So... <coughs> So I've given you two pictures of legacy. One is a clock. What are we doing right now? One is a compass. Where are we going? And the third one is companions. Who's going with us? In other words, when I take this journey, who am I going to take with me on this? This this is huge. This is huge. I can remember under the... Um, under President George W. Bush's administration, they asked me to go spend a day with the CIA. And they wanted me to talk to their top, I don't know, maybe six, 700 leaders about leadership and, and, and really kind of get them on the same page. And they kind of wanted to, uh, I don't know, I, I think they wanted me just to come in and give uh, the, the leaders of the CIA some, some purpose and some motivation. So that I went there. That was a very interesting experience. I mean, when you come to the gate, they take everything from you. They, I mean, they, you, you, you carry nothing on the inside. I, I mean, you, the, the lesson I have, it's got to be memorized. I mean, it, it, no phone, nothing. So I sat down with lunch, and, and in the CIA, there are three different divisions. And, and they all operate under the CIA umbrella, but, but the, there are three almost different organizations within the CIA. And so I'm, I'm having lunch with about 20 of them, and they are the leaders of those three divisions. We, so we're having a, a, a lunch, and I can sense tension in the room. And I thought, wow, you know, 
this isn't flowing really well. The people seem to be a little awkward with each other. By the time the dinner or the lunch was over, I, I came to the conclusion that uh, they probably didn't like each other. In fact, I was bold enough that I finally looked at the at the three main leaders of the three divisions. I said, how often do you get together? And they say, seldom. We haven't been together for months until today. And I looked at them and I thought, well, how are you going to build a great organization if you aren't spending time together? And and and, and then I finally just asked, you know, hey, you know, do you like each other? <laughs> now, that was a stupid question I asked. I mean, this is the CIA. All of a sudden, I, I could see them just say, come with us, son. And they'd taken me out in the back and putting a blindfold on me. And you never know where I went. You just say, John disappeared. I thought, why am I asking them, do they like each other? But to make the bottom line is, they didn't like each other. And now they're wanting me to teach them how to do well together. That's not possible. So when you're thinking of legacy, you, you got to think of companions. I mean, who do I want to go with me? Who do I want to take the trip with me? In my book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, I talk about the law of the inner circle. Those closest to that leader, what do they do? They determine the level of, of that leader's success. Wow. And so, therefore, I, uh, I I developed a list of questions that I asked the people that are going to take the legacy trip with me, my inner circle. Questions such as, you know, do they live out good values? Are their values kind of like mine? I, I want to. I always want to do a values test. I, I want. I'm looking for values compatibility. Another question is, the people that I'm bringing on my team as my inner circle, do they? High, have high influence with other people. In other words, if I bring them on, I want them to be able to influence other people so that we can lead well together. Another question I ask is, do they have a, 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 a do they have high giftedness? Are they gifted well in the areas, especially that would complete me or complement me? In other words, do they have gifts that I don't have? Can they lead well? Can they equip other people? These are just, I, I, another question I ask is, are they just a good fit? In fact, I had my inner circle members go do something socially, individually, with somebody that we're thinking about it, just to, and then they come back and I say, did you like them? You know, I, I don't mean it's wrong if you, I'm 75, do you think I just want to take a trip? I mean, at my age with people that I don't like or that don't have my values. So that companion's question is really, it's just really, really important. Wow. So as I wrap up my teaching session on legacy, I, I just want you to know that, that you should be uh, preparing to hand that baton off to someone else. And, and by the way, you, you, you hand the baton off at full speed. Don't, don't, wait until, don't wait until you're old and you're, you're no longer running fast and you're kind of staggering over there giving that baton. Because anybody knows in a relay race, the only team that's going to win are when all of the the all of the runners pass the baton off at peak speed. That's really, really essential. So just think of the three pictures. And and as you think of those three pictures, just simply say, hey, do I have a clock in my life that just keeps me focused on the everyday essentials, which will compound each day into something big? That's important. And 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 by the way, do do I have a yeah, do, do I have a compass that's going to make sure that, you know, my direction is right? And then how about my companions? Are there people that I love? Are they people that I care for? Are they people that, wow, I, I look up every morning and say, hey, we get to take the journey together. I close with saying that I, for years, have taught and trained leaders because I believe everything rises and falls on leadership. And, and when leadership rises, when leadership does well, it does well because the leaders have good leadership skills and they have good values. And, and by the way, when it falls, it goes down. It's because the leaders have bad, poor leadership skills and, 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 and pretty poor values also. So as you're thinking of a legacy, just, hey, keep that clock. Yeah, keep that compass. Keep those companions. Just keep them in front of you. 
and visually every day ask yourself, that, you know, what, what am I doing today that's essential that's going to give a great return someday? I got to keep watching the clock and, oh my, whew, where am I going? And activity is not necessarily accomplished, but let me, let me look at my compass. Got to make sure I'm going in the right direction. And then, wow, who's going with me? Who are my companions going to be? If you ask those three questions and you keep those three pictures, I promise you, you are going to develop a legacy that people are, are going to want to pick up on, follow, and help you fulfill. Wow, amazing. Thank you, John. That was great. Thank you so much for being with us today and, um, and talking about the essentials that we need and the everyday five. I love that, you know, the five things we need to do and the clock and the compass and the companions. I love C words, so they work really good for me. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Wendy and Ni nee and Sam. Thank you very much for having me. I'm honored to be with you today. So, yeah. Dr. Nee, do you have a question for John? Um, yes. Um, and th thanks, John. Thanks for this wonderful um, um, keynote that you've given us today. Um, as brief as it is, I think it summarizes the whole essence of what leadership is about. And I want to th um, especially thank you for um, the example you've given us and for making yourself available um, for us. Um, now, as a young man myself, I often ask uh, if you know myself this question: If I have the opportunity to meet John Maxwell, what question would I ask him? <laughs> and this is a question I like to ask you. All right, that in your leadership journey, what mistakes have you made? You know, you've talked to us about compass, about the clock, those three pictures, and about companions. You know. What common mistakes do young leaders make today? And what mistakes have you made? Or maybe one or two mistakes. And how did you fix them? Or how did you correct them or recognize yeah, them? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, you know, Dr. Nee, if I, if I was talking to just beautiful young leaders with great potential, I would tell them that one of the biggest mistakes that they're going to make is worrying about the mistakes that they're going to make because they're going to make them. I, I mean, I'm always amazed that people say, well, I want you to help me mentor me, John, because I'd like to not make a lot of mistakes. And I say, I, I'm, I'm too sorry. I'm not that good of a mentor. And by the way, you're not that good of a mentee either. So, so I think here, one of the things I'm teaching right now, Dr. Nee, is that we need to keep success and failure together. And, yes. and, and we don't do that. And that's a huge mistake. We put success way over here and we put failure way over here. And we mm -hmm. say, you know, succeed, don't fail. And, and that, that's a huge mistake. They need to go together. Success needs failure. And failure needs success. Uh, you know, Bill Gates... You know, Bill Gates said, success is a lousy teacher. It makes people think they can't lose. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I, I say keep them together. And here's why. Let's say I'm really doing well and I'm kind of on a roll and I'm having some good successes under my belt. I need to keep failure real close to me so that in my successes, I continue to have humility in my life. Because humility is what makes a person teachable. Mm -hmm. You remove you 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 start separating failure, which gives humility to people, and all of a sudden, what do I do with successful? I become arrogant. I'm like Bill Gates. I think I can't lose, so I got to get them back together. And, and by the way, when I'm when I'm not doing well, and I'm, I'm you know I'm not you know I, I'm I'm having some losses. Okay, I need to keep success real close to that failure because when I do that, I, I receive resiliency. You know I. I I get back up and I say, wait a minute, I, I can do this. So when I ask people about their life and, and what's the most important lesson they've ever learned, whatever they give me that, whatever that lesson is, and I've asked this hundreds of times, they always have a, a, a story that has failure in it. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll always say, you know, the most important lesson, you know, maybe I, maybe I lost, maybe, maybe I lost my job. You know, you know, per, you know, Hey, perhaps there was a death of a close friend. And they're always talking about some kind of adverse, difficult, 
situation in the middle of the best, most important lesson they have ever learned. So I've come to the conclusion, you, you just got to keep success and failure together. So I had somebody, one quick thing. I had somebody just last week in a leadership Q and a somewhere in the country. I always somewhere. And, and, uh, and they asked me that they, they said, okay, what's the biggest mistake that you've made this month? And I thought, okay, well, let me see what I can figure out. And I'm trying to pull it out. And it's, and, and honestly, I'm having a hard time pulling it out. And that kind of bothered me. I thought, really, John, as many mistakes you make and you can't figure this out. But then I turned around and I thought, if they would have asked me, what was my biggest success this month? I'd have had a, I'd have had a hard time figuring that one out either. And why? I keep them together. Yeah, that's good. And because that's I right. keep them together, the successes aren't something that caused me to get egocentric and amazing. And the failures aren't causing me to be depressed because they just fit together. So the biggest mistake I think young people make is the fact that they don't want to make mistakes. And, 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 be, and when that's the case, then I fail to take action. And when I take, I fail to take action, I make by far the biggest mistake of all, and that is not taking action. No one was ever successful on good intentions. Yeah, they only right. get successful on good action. See, so, so I would tell young people, just jump in. You're never good the first time, so don't even try. It's okay. You know, how do you develop a leader? You practice leadership. You got to practice. Well, if you practice, you're going to have some misses. It's okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay. great, John. Uh, Dr. Samuel, I know you've got a question burning in your heart that you want to ask, John. Oh, thank you very much, Wendy. And once again, John, it's always a delight, a pleasure and honor to listen to you, to read your books. I often say that you really inspire me. You've inspired me from a very young age, and I'm so excited um, because I don't want to take too much of our time. So I'm just going to jump straight into the question. You've given us three pictures today that will stay with me for the rest of my life. The picture of the clock, the picture of the compass, and the picture of companions. If you would add one more picture to this, to, 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 to help a young leader like me, what would be that extra picture that you would like to share with us today? Okay. Um, wow, Samuel. You may, be stumped, you may be stumped the band here. You know, uh, oh, I, I, you know what I would say? Okay. I, it's, I just don't know how to do the picture on this, I, you know, but I can give you a word that starts with a C that'll make some people happy. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I would, I would tell a young person, uh, consistency compounds. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason I would tell them that is because I think that too often when you're young, you, you, we want it now and boy, you know, I want to, you know, I want success now, and, you know, they're, you know, kids are always asking me, how do I brand myself for success? And I, you know, I tell them, you know, forget branding, just get good. If you're, if you're good, any brand works. And if you're bad, they're in the brand in the world that'll save you. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> could, you, could you not just get good? So I think for young people, I would say um, consistency, consistency compounds. And, and it doesn't show up in your first few years. Yeah. And uh, just like money that you have invested, you know, you, you don't invest it and a month later pull it out and say, I wonder how well I'm doing. Well, you aren't doing anything yet. It hasn't been in there long a time. And, and so the compounding comes on the back end. In fact, mm -hmm. I was joking the other day and I was telling somebody, if you're going to quit, quit the first week because you didn't have anything invested in it yet. I mean, there's no damage. Just quit. It won't matter. They won't even know you were gone. They didn't even know you were yeah. there. Yeah. You know, but, but the longer you stay in the game, the, you know, so at my age, 75, I'm overwhelmed by the compounding. I'm, I'm overwhelmed every, every day. I'm looking and say, really? I had no idea. Mm. So in the beginning, you're underwhelmed, but there's no, there's no compounding at all. So I just tell them consistency. Just, just stay, stay consistent in the game. That's great. And thank you for adding to my C words, John. That's, I'm just collecting them beautifully. Uh, my question for you, and I'm going to take you to the other end of the age scale because we've got these wonderful leaders in Dr. Nee and Dr. Samuel. Well, I'm, I'm a little bit older than what they are. I'm much closer to your age. Um, so 
my question is, and I, I, I spend a lot of time working with women that uh, that are probably a little bit um, older. Uh, my question is, if you haven't already started to work on your legacy and it's not something that you've given a lot of thought to, as you get older, it's not too late, or do you think it's too late to be able to turn around perhaps that generational inheritance or the legacy that is not okay and create a legacy that you do want to leave, a baton that you can pass on? Let me give you a bit more clarity around that question. As I said, I work with a lot of women. A lot of women have got lives that are not necessarily something they want to leave for their children or the generations to come afterwards. And they feel like it's too late. I know differently, but I know some of our, uh, our listeners today will be closer to my age uh, group and be thinking, well, is it too late for me? That, that's a great question. And Wendy, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is it's not too late. Not at all. So start where you are. I love the statement that says, um, or let me see if it's a poem. Let me see if I can pull it out. I haven't quoted it for a long time. Though you could not go back and make a brand new start, my friend, anyone can start from now and make a brand new end. And so that little poem is, is an answer to your question. So the good news is, you know, if you're in your 60s or 70s and you, you could, you, it's not too late. It's not too late. The, now, the, 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 but I said there was a good news and bad news. The bad news is it won't compound as much. It mm -hmm. can't. You, you, don't, you don't have enough time. So you have to have a realism about the legacy that you want to leave. But what I tell people is start with the people you love and leave it mm -hmm. there. Because they'll be the best guardians and they'll be the best uh, uh, producers, multipliers. Of, of that legacy that you wanted. So I think you have to be very clear. You, it, whereas when you're young, you maybe are trying to find your way. When you get my age, you, you, if you haven't found your way, you're, you're, you're not going to. So, so what you do is you are clear about what you want your legacy to be. Mm -hmm. So you say, Here, let me tell you, I'm going to tell you what I would like to accomplish. I don't know how much time I have to accomplish it, but I'm going to start. And I would love for you to be on the team. And I'd love for you to help me. And, and you just kind of uh, declare it and, 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 and start. And, and again, how do I know how much time I have or you have? But here's what I know. You need to, get, you need to start now because you do have a short window and you need to be real clear what you're trying to accomplish and, and then bring those people around you. It will be fewer than if you started a long time ago, but it doesn't matter. Start now and... Uh, you can make a difference, and by all means, you can have a legacy that when you're gone, uh, that your legacy, it continues. It just can't be the size of a person that had time to make a compound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great, John. And, and so back to your, your pictures of clock and compass and companions. Uh, in that age bracket, your companions are really important because they're the ones, those loved ones, that will carry that legacy on. Totally. Absolutely. That's why, Wendy, I have in our coaching company, I have a bunch of younger generation kids around me because because I, I, I'm looking at them. I can say, you're going to be here longer than I'm going to be here. So yeah, get this well. You know, do it. Yeah, that's right. That's why I work with a lot, a lot of younger women as well. So they um, can be my companion. So. Wendy, you are a terrific friend and a great leader. And, and to be with you and, and to be with Dr. Samuel and Dr. Nee, it's been a real honor and, and I just wish you well in legacy 2022 and, and I'm your friend and my name is John and just uh, stay in the game. You're making a difference. You're really making a difference. And I'm very proud of you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for today. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for being a part of legacy conference 2022 hosted by the incredible Dr. Nee Borire. Dr. Nee is a foremost leadership expert in the area of neuroleadership, neurochange, and neuroperformance for business executives and career professionals. Some of Dr. Nee's life-changing materials are the Brain, Mind, and Change series, which consists of 10 modules from Dr. Nee and other insightful facilitators. Visit legacyconsults.com.au forward slash products to get yours at a 50% discount. Also available is the Neuroscience of Peak Performance by Dr. Nee and one of Australia's leading neuroleadership coach, Kristen Hansen. Visit legacyconsults.com.au forward slash product to get a 50% discount.
You can also get three months exclusive one-on-one coaching with Dr. Niyi, or you can choose to join a group coaching call. Visit legacyconsults.com.au forward slash products to book your slot. Finally, you can get Dr. Niyi's books, Navigating Change, Victoria Erserta and Hager on Amazon. And you can pre-order your copy of his new books, Changing You and Overcoming. All products and materials are available at a 50% discount only during this conference. This includes a special masterclass that Dr. Nee and Kristen Hansen will be hosting on the 20th of September, titled The Neuroscience of Leadership and Influence. Visit neeboriray.com forward slash neuroperformance for more information and to book your slot. You don't want to miss it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. How do you recover from that? How do you recover from that? Let me drink some water. Hmm. Oh my goodness. I'm I'm starting to get emotional right now. Not only is this a dream come true. <laughs> I wish you were backstage with us. I I wish Oh my lord. Oh my goodness. <laughs> ah. All right. Um don't let me get don't let me get too emotional here. <laughs> I don't have words. I like words. I like words. Somebody help me. I like words. All right. Whatever lesson you've learned, I just want you to share the lesson. Just just share the lesson. Just keep sharing the lesson. Ah, my notes are full. My note my notes I have just kept writing and writing and right. My god, the picture of the clock, the picture of the compass, the pi- my goodness. Oh. <laughs> oh lord. Oh god. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see your lessons. What are the things you're sharing? Yeah, what? Somebody said I'm emotional already. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Same here. Same. Same here. Same here. So amazing! Wow. <laughs> My neighbors must be wondering what is this guy doing. <laughs> Somebody said, yeah, the, the, I, I caught that lesson too. I caught that lesson too. The biggest mistake young people make is worrying to make mistakes. Oh my goodness, what a lesson. The clock shows what you must do right now. What are you doing now? The the compass shows the direction you are going. My goodness. And your companions, did you you guys catch those those few questions? Amazing. Oh wait, apologies. Uh, John was so strict on time. Hence, we couldn't take questions from our audience. So in case we saw a lot of questions, a lot of you were asking questions, unlike our other guests, uh, John had had a specific time frame that he had to be with us today so we couldn't take your question so we had to just um uh, literally ask him the questions that were burning on our own hearts so forgive us for that but nonetheless please do me a favor uh beyond this live stream right now we want many more people to be able to see this video so do me a favor right now okay i want you to like this video all right. Uh, 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 you know, I want you to like this video because there's one more session coming after this. And we want people to be able to see this video so that they can watch John's session and be able to watch the coming session as well. So please do me a favor, like this video right now. I think we have about just 200 likes on this video. That's not enough to help the algorithm. I want you to like it. everybody watching right now. Please do us a favor. All right. That's the only way you can pay us back. I think about 400. Now, yes, let's like this video on YouTube, like it on LinkedIn. Help us. We want more. More people to see this video. More people need to see this video. More leaders need to see this video. More young people need to see this video. More elderly people need to see. Everybody needs to see this video. Like it right now. Like it right now. I'm gonna give you one 30 seconds. 30 seconds to do that. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Like this video right now, please. Please, very important, very important. And keep sharing your lesson. Somebody said, keep success and failure together. I got that too. I got that too. Many times we share our story and we, we leave the failure part 
you know, away. You know, I, I think it's about 450 now. Can we get it more to like 1,000? Can we get it to 500? Can we get it to, to 600, 700? This helps the algorithm. It helps YouTube to be able to put it out there so that a lot more people will see. People who couldn't attend live would also be blessed by it because we will keep it on this channel. And if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please subscribe to this channel as well. It, it would help the algorithm. It would help a lot of people see it. All right. I know a lot of people are praying for, for myself, for Dr. Nee, for Wendy, for this, for this, for this. But wait, wait, we are not done yet. There's one more session to go and i have the incredible privilege the incredible joy to bring my friend all right um uh dr neve to the glory of god we've sat together we've you know we've we've talked together i remember telling you guys you know just before john came on that two years ago this was a phone conversation it was just an idea in our in our heads you know a vision god placed in our heart all right uh, shout out to my dad my dad is here <laughs> can see him and his lesson is that we can start anywhere i like it yeah i love it god bless you dad all right and, and dr nia and i were, were, were just talking about this as an idea and when wendy came along as well it was just an idea and look at us today look at many lives that have been blessed by this and many more lives that will be blessed by this i want you to do me a favor you need to listen to the visionary himself as he comes on right now there's one more session so please don't go anywhere Anyone that has gone anywhere, tell them to come back. There is something you've got to hear right now that will change your life forever. You need to see the heart of my friend for what, you know, for bringing this conference together and what God has laid on his heart as well. I heard mom is watching too. Mom, love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go into a session that will blow our minds because I, I know this man is my friend. I know God has deposited great things in his heart to share with us. If you don't know Dr. Nee, Dr. Nee is, a, is someone who has got a, a heart for people. All right, a, a strong heart for people. And what he's about to share with us today will help you. But I'm not going to introduce him because if I do, we'll be here for another like you know, 15 minutes introducing him. I'm just going to play his introduction video so you get to meet him yourself. And the next voice you're going to hear right after will be the voice of my very good friend, Dr. Nee Bore. God bless. Nee Bore Ray is an award-winning neurologist, neuroscience researcher, neuroleadership expert, and executive coach who has a mandate to empower leaders to create personal, professional, and organizational change. He is also the director of Legacy Consults, a leadership development platform that equips leaders to improve their performance and inspire their teams to increase the productivity and profit of their organizations. Using evidence-based and bespoke neuroscience solutions, Ni has certifications in neuroscience for business from MIT Boston, USA, as well as the neuroscience of leadership from Enhancing Performance in Australia. He is also a John Maxwell team certified trainer and facilitator. Ni is the founder and host of Brain, Mind and Change, an online series which combines his scientific background, background and leadership and calling leadership to teach calling. people how to achieve <laughs> mastery, of, achieve their mastery brain, of their brain, wire their mind and change their world. He is also a squadron leader in the Royal Australian Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the host and convener of Legacy Conference 2022, Dr. Ni Borire. Thank you, Dr. Sam, for that wonderful introduction. And thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for those who have attended every single session. This is a dream come true. Two years ago, just after COVID hit, I felt a strong burden in my heart that I needed to do more than what I was doing. I, at the time, I was working as a neurologist in a teaching hospital. I had a successful private practice, and I was, a, I was pastoring a local church. I have an amazing wife. I've got two wonderful boys the best gift that God has given me. And life seemed to be cruising, but I just felt unease. I felt that burden on, in my heart that I needed to get a message out, a message of hope, a message of change. I needed to tell my story because somebody needed to hear that story. And I'm glad that I responded. And I'm glad that I took action and I didn't wait. The first group I joined was a John Maxwell group. And I'm glad that, you know, to have John Maxwell you know, on this platform is huge for me. And I'm glad, I'm very excited and very happy that this happened. And in the last two years, I've grown. In the last two years, I've learned a lot. In the last two years, I've made mistakes. In the last two years, I've failed. In the last two years, I've succeeded. In the last two years, I've reached thousands of people. 
Every week we write newsletters to thousands and thousands of people. Every week I get hundreds of emails telling me how, you know, they've been blessed and how they've been impacted. This is a journey worth, you know, um, going on. This is a journey worth going on. I want to especially thank my wife, Olayemi Boriri. Without her, this would not have been possible. She's the one that stands by me all the time. She's the one that preaches my messages back to me. She's the one that holds me accountable. And I really, really appreciate her. She's not been visible throughout this program, not by planning, not by my intention, uh, but that's just the way she rolls. She likes to work behind the scenes. And so I want you to say shout out to Yemi. Um, and and uh, yeah, she deserves it. I want to thank my family and friends. I want to thank my ministry partners, Sam Ekundai, a covenant friend. God bless you, brother. You've been there for me all through this journey. And I'm glad that we did this together. I'm glad that we did this together. And to Wendy Burns, my coach, and now my friend, thank you, Wendy, for your support, for your assistance, and all the other people who are watching right now. Thank you for being here. And I hope that this last session, which is a closing charge of Legacy 2022, will inspire you, will build you up. You see, in the last 12 months, I have really focused on one very important aspect of leadership, and that is neural leadership. And what is neural leadership? Neural leadership is a word that was coined by David Rock in 2006 to describe a new phenomenon in the area of leadership development, how to improve leadership with our understanding of neuroscience. And I want to introduce some of those concepts to you today in a very simple way, because it will help in your leadership journey. Furthermore, I'd like to call you to action. This is a call to action. You've learned a lot from all the speakers. And some of you that were in the VIP session, you also got some value. But now is the time to translate all this value into action. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing my screen. It would be a mixed um, teaching and um, a mixture of teaching and lecturing. Uh, but just follow me because I'm going to be explaining some concepts to you. And I hope that you will get a lot of value there. I'm going to share my screen um, shortly. Great. You see, this curve here called the change curve is a very, very common curve that a lot of people who work in change management would understand. Now, why am I showing this curve? This curve is also a representation of your drive and motivation in the next few weeks. Now, you've heard John talk about consistency. Consistency is easier said than done. But this curve would illustrate to you in very clear terms the impact, how the impact of this meeting would you know, be with you, how you will go on with the journey in your journey as you go through the next few days. Now, a lot of you have been inspired and blessed and motivated by the teachings that you received. A lot of you have been, you know, been sending emails every day and since this program started, we've been receiving emails. In fact, before this program started, we were getting testimonies, lots and lots of testimonies and lots and lots of emails about how powerful the sessions have been and how impactful they've been. Let me tell you, the first stage of this curve is a stage of excitement and anticipation. And that's what happens when you're inspired. You've heard John speak and you feel roused. You feel, yes, I'm going to start a new project. I'm going to start a new job. I'm going to start that ministry. I'm going to open that, you know, that, that business. I'm going to start, you know, mentoring young people. I'm going to start talking to teenagers. I'm going to start that youth ministry, that youth outreach, prison outreach, whatever it is that you want to do to impact people. You're excited right now. You've heard about succession and you want to develop people, develop people, build people up because there's no success without succession. Now you want to leave a legacy. You want to start, you know, helping people grow, influencing people positively. You're inspired. You're excited. But the reality is that I can guarantee you in a few weeks time, you will not feel the same way. Once legacy is all gone and you've watched this video once or twice, you won't feel the same way. What would happen is that you would start to, your excitement would start to transform into frustration and anxiety. Frustration from the fact that you're not leaving out what you've you know, had in mind, what you're written down. You're written down here that you're going to do these one, two, three, four things. But you may find that in the next two or three weeks, you've not even started. 
you may find that the other things will come on. All the other hassles and troubles of life may distract you from carrying out what you really intended to do. And that can be a big frustration at times. That can create some sense of unease and anxiety. And you may get to the low point of feeling a lot of resistance to further change and be in a state of despair because you're just frustrated about how, you know, how, um, inconsistent you've been. Sometimes the, the, the fact that you're inconsistent would even create a big burden for you to carry. But you know what? If you are able to grind through or push through the challenges that you're facing, you will start to explore and learn new ways of translating your vision into reality. And if you're consistent enough with that, you will get your energy back and before you know it, there'll be long-term commitment and accomplishment. Now, I want to focus on this lower half of the curve because that's where a lot of people struggle. A lot of people start with great ideas. A lot of people get new insights. Some of you in this program, you've gotten revelation, insight. You've received instruction about what to do. You've received instruction about where to go, who to meet, who to talk to, how to talk to people. You've been inspired. You've been blessed. You've been challenged. And all of those things are there. They're good. But the problem is that you may trip up when you start to feel anxious about your dreams, when you start to feel frustrated about the lack of results, when you start to experience resistance from people or even from your own self, when you start to experience that despair. All right. You know what? It's called the valley of latent disappointment. Credited to John James Clare, the valley of latent disappointment. A lot of people will feel if it's automatic, it's compulsory. And no successful change agent or no successful person who goes through change would escape this. No, it's inescapable. You're going to go through a period of disappointment, a period of, 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 of apparent lack of results, where you're putting in effort, where you're grinding, but you're not seeing anything. And that can make you frustrated and anxious. So we need to manage this. And that's what I want to teach in the next few minutes, how to manage this period of your life. How to manage it is very, very essential. Otherwise, all of this will be lost. And the essence of legacy, which is about influencing people and leaving something for the next generation, will be gone. So that's why you need to pay attention right now. Make sure you share this link with all your friends and refer your people to this, your friends, your networks to this, to watch this video over and over again, because you will learn something really powerful. Okay, so the question is, how do we, how do we lift the curve up? How do we fast track our journey? How do we automate our behaviors so that we can have habits that are wholesome and that are high performing so that we can achieve what we intend to achieve? That's very key and very important. Very key and very important. Now, let me tell you something about change. Change is difficult. And a lot of you here, you get ex excited and inspired to change, but you would find that change is difficult. Not impossible. Change is difficult. It's not impossible, but it's really difficult. Why? It, the reason is because our brains are wired to resist change. We are naturally wired to resist change. We are naturally wired to resist change. And why is that? Number one, the reason is because the brain likes similarity. The brain, our brain likes to be in a very similar environment. That's why you are more likely, you're more likely to be attracted to people who look like you. You are more likely to be attracted to people who talk like you. You are more likely to be attracted to people who are in your same space. Our brain likes similarity. Your brain likes to be automated so that you keep doing the same thing and following the same pattern over and over again. That's why it's easier for you to stumble on the same stone over and over again because you're conditioned to like similarity. Anything that is dissimilar, anything that is that varies from the pattern, from, that varies from the norm, that 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 challenges the status quo, will become a problem for you. I hope I hope you're getting me. Come on, guys. I hope you guys are getting me. Your brain is wired to love similarity, and anything that is not normal in court would create problems for you. And that's why you struggle. You wonder, why do I struggle? I intend to lose weight. I'm inspired to lose weight, but I just can't share the kilos. Oh, I want to start a new project. I'm inspired to start this project. I want to reach out to young people in my community. I want to help teenagers, inspire teenagers, and mentor teenagers. You, 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 you write out the plan. You set it up, but you just can't execute. You just can't execute because something new. And you, your brain wants to watch TV. Your brain wants to, to watch a program on Netflix. Your brain wants to do other things because that's what your brain is used to. To, you're conditioned to like similarity. And that's one, what's going to challenge you. That's going to be a challenge you would face right now in the next few weeks. You're going to face this challenge 
Number two, your brain is wired to resist change because your brain loves stability. You're wired to be in a state of stability. You don't want anything to disturb the balance. You don't want to move. You don't want to change. Your brain is, is wired to resist change because the brain loves stability. And finally, the brain loves security. Anything that would make you insecure, anything that would make you insecure would be a big challenge. Your brain is wired to love security. That's why for a lot of people, some of you right now, you may be getting, in, getting instructions, divine instructions to leave your job and start a new project and start a new business or move or relocate or do something but you're not doing it because you're insecure you're not doing it because you're insecure because your brain wants security your mind keeps telling you don't do it don't do it don't do it your brain loves security your brain is wired to resist change so how do we fix this is the question this leads me to the concept of threat and reward now let me explain to this to you the reason why your brain resists change, the reason why you feel find it difficult to execute changes because every time your brain is in a situation that is not stable, that is not similar, or that's not secure, your brain goes into a threat state. You go into a threat state. And when you're in a threat state, I'm going to describe what a threat state is right now. You're full of negative emotions and you're not able to process things properly. You won't be able to make good judgments. You won't be able to make good decisions and you will not be able to execute. You won't be able to act because you're in a state of threat. Anything that threatens your stability, your security, and the similarity of the concepts that your, bra that your brain is exposed to will create a threat state within you. And you know the interesting thing, the interest interesting thing is that this happens at a non-conscious level. So you don't even have to consciously think about this. At a non-conscious level, five times a second, your brain is constantly scanning for threats. So you don't even have to plan it. Do you know that since we started this, every second, five times in a second, your brain has been scanning for threats. And those threats are not, you know, maybe when man was a hunter-gatherer, those threats could have been the bear and the lion and all that. But today, those threats will be an email. Some of you, while listening to this right now, you've received notifications, email notifications, and you're just in a state of threat. Or it could be reward. Your brain is also looking for reward. And so your brain rewards stability. Your brain rewards security. Your brain rewards similarity. Anything that is outside of that will tilt you into a threat state. But when you're in a threat state, you can't really be at your best. You can't really execute. You would give up. You would, if you go back to that change curve, you will give up very quickly when you're in a threat state because the threat state is oh, is filled with a negative emotions. When you're in a threat state, you're overwhelmed with negative emotions. But when you're in a reward state, you've got lots and lots of positive emotions. All right. So when you're in a threat state, your focus becomes narrow. You become risk averse. You have less insight. You become less connected. You become problem focused. I used to give this example because I'm a person of faith. I use this example a lot, which is the example of Aga. And, and you wouldn't mind me because I wrote a book about Aga with a few friends. Um, and I, if you remember the story of Aga, you know, you would understand this. Aga was a young teenage lady about maybe in her mid things, 13, 14, 15, when she was picked up from the land of Egypt by Abraham and Sarah. She was just picked up as a slave girl to help them in their home. Abraham had hundreds of slaves and maybe thousands of slaves. So Aga was just a number. But let me tell you, decades later, when Abraham and Sarah, the Abraham household needed a kid, they needed a son, they could not have one. Sarah thought of a shortcut. She thought of getting a surrogate. And who was the surrogate? The surrogate was Agar. She picked up someone out of all the female um, slaves, the you know, the maidens they had. She chose Sarah, um, Agar. And of course, Agar was waiting on her. Agar was a personal maid. Agar was probably very beautiful. She was a girl that had lots of dreams and lots of hopes and lots of aspirations. But like many of you, Agar did not make the choice to go to eat, to be sold to, 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 um, to Abraham. Agar did not you know, make the choice to be sold to slavery. Agar did not make the choice. She wasn't called into the meeting when they decided to make her a surrogate. That conversation was between Abraham and Sarah. They both decided to make Agar a surrogate for her to have a baby. And we don't know how long it took, but she got pregnant. And yeah, Yes, yes, I know she didn't manage things well, but she was so maltreated by a mistress that she ran away. She was pregnant. Aga was pregnant. Remember, she had left Egypt when she was a little kid, when she was an adolescent. Now she was a pregnant woman running away from Sarah. But the angel of God appeared to her and said, no, you got to go back because your hopes and your dreams are in the seed you're carrying. And his name will be called Ishmael because that's your reward. 
your dreams, that's your Ishmael. You can't go away. She went back and she served. She had a baby. But one morning, Abraham woke her up and sent her away. And that was because Sarah was insecure. Sarah felt that Ishmael was going to threaten the inheritance that was left for Isaac. And so Abraham woke up in the morning. And I would have thought Abraham would have done a little bit better than he did because Abraham was a bloody rich man. He was a rich man. Abraham sent Agar away just with some small supplies, water and bread and, an, and, and a donkey. He didn't provide her security. This was a woman who had left Egypt decades ago, who was now a grown woman and now had a, a, a child. She was a single mother. All right. And look at it. Every major landmark in the life of Agar did not involve Agar's own decision, did not involve Agar's own thoughts, did not involve Agar's own issues, um, Agar's own volition. And that's the situation that some of you are in right now. A lot of the things happening to you, you know, are things that are beyond your control and you struggle, you struggle to adapt. But listen to me, Agar moved, walk, was walking through that de desert. As she was walking through the desert. She had no GPS. She probably didn't know where she was going. She was just wandering aimlessly with a little kid and no water. She ran out of water. She was frustrated. She was distracted. She was in despair. She, was, she had just been sent away by the father of her son. She had just been sent away by the man who slept with her many times. Maybe. She had, done, she had just been sent away by the man who was supposed to, who was who were probably old enough to be her grandfather. She had just been sent away without any explanation. They didn't give her a reason. They sent her away. And while she was in the desert, she was she looked at her son who was dehydrated with the eyes sunken and the skin dry and mottled. The, the arms are cold. The extremities cold. No perfusion. And she, as she looked at this dehydrated boy who was about to die, she couldn't look at him die. She couldn't see him die. And a lot of you are there, you're carrying your dreams. You can't afford, you, you can't even look at your dreams. Those dreams are about to die in your hand. So you put the dreams apart, you, you are away, you put the dream away. And that's what she did. She hid the boy under a tree and she went somewhere else to cry. She was crying and wailing with her heads buried within her laps and crying and crying and crying. And while she was crying, the angel of God came and the angel said, Agar, stop crying. What are you crying about? The voice of the boy has gone to heaven. Not your prayers. Stop praying. The voice of your dream is crying out. Some of you, you've left your dreams and your dreams are crying out right now. Your dreams are crying out right now. And legacy is a divine interruption for you. For you, legacy is a divine interruption to call you to go back to that abandoned dream, to go back to that abandoned vision, to go back to that abandoned project, to pick up again, pick up from where you left it. It's about to die. Pick it up. Guess what? Aga, the angel pointed a well to her. So turn aside. There's a well there. Feed the boy with, get the boy some water to quench his thirst. Do you know that the angel did not dig the well? The angel, I can tell you, the angel did not dig the well. The well was there. Aga was in a threat state. She had just been sent away by the family that took her as parents. She had just been sent away by the man who slept with her, impregnated her, her father, her son. She had just been sent away. She was in a threat state. She had just been rejected. She had just been, she was depressed. She was, she had, she was about to give up. She had no one to turn to. There was no counselor. There was no book. There was no encourager. She was in the heat of the sun, crying because she, she, she had nowhere to go. Some of you are desperate. You're crying. No one is listening to you. But when you're in a threat state, you can't see opportunity. There was an opportunity there. There was a well there. God said, stop her from praying. She's prayed enough. Send the, the angel of the Lord, go stop her prayer. Do you know the angel interrupted the prayer? Say, stop praying. You've been praying long enough. Turn aside. Look at the well I've provided. You're in a threat state. Do you know, it's sometimes for those who are, you know, people of faith here, sometimes you can pray from a place of fear and your prayer will not even take away your fear. And you keep praying and praying with a place of fear because you can't even hear. Do you understand what I've just said? Some people pray from a place of fear and their prayer will not remove their fear because they cannot hear. If you cannot hear, your fear cannot go away. When you hear, you get reassurance. Your hearing brings faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you can't hear, you will keep praying and banging on the door from a place of fear. Agar was praying because she didn't want her son to die. It wasn't from a place of fear. And God sent the angel, stop her, stop her, stop, 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 stop. Turn to your right. There is a well. When you're in a state of threat, 
your focus becomes narrow. You don't want to take any risk. You don't want to do anything. You, you just want to be stable. You're in your, your comfort zone. You can't generate insight. You don't feel connected. And you become problem-focused, not solution-focused. You, you're only focused on the problem. You can't see the opportunity. Thank God the angel stopped Agar from praying. Do you know that she would have kept praying and the son would have died? She would have kept praying because God would not have sent rain. There was well there. There's a well. And some of you there, I'm not saying you should not be spiritual. I'm not saying you stop being spiritual, but you got to open your eye. It's time for you to open your eye. It's time for you to see around you. And how can you see when you're in a state of threat? That's what I'm trying to explain to you. And I'm trying to bring, you know, my understanding of science with scripture so that you can understand and you can, you, you can apply this to your life. But of course, when you're in a reward state, your focus broadens. You become open to risk. You generate more insights. You're more solution focused. You get more positive emotions. You're more solution focused. You're more driven. You're more likely to, 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 to see things the way they should be. You have a clearer picture of things. That's exactly the way it is. So the question is, how do we get you from a threat state to a reward state? A lot of that has to do with the way your mind is wired. Because let's go back to this curve. You feel excited now, you're going to deep down. And if you go so low and you're in a threat state, in a state of despair, you will not be able to bounce back. A lot of people get trapped here in the valley of later disappointment. They can't bounce back, not knowing that you've got to graft yourself a little bit more. A, a bamboo tree spends five years or more, sometimes up to 10 years in the ground. But within six weeks, it will grow up to six meters. Can you imagine that? So sometimes whilst you're there in that valley of disappointment where there are no rewards, so when you're not seeing the signs, you may give up. That's what I've come to tell you, that it's not time to pack in. It's not time to give up. And if you're able to understand and apply some of the things I'll be teaching, you can actually get yourself into a reward state and thrive. It's all in the mind. I like this image. I use it a lot, the iceberg effect. More than 90% of what happens to you, of how you behave, are related to those non-conscious motivations and values and belief systems. So a lot of the things you do are automated. They are habits. The way you see things, your view of life, the way you talk to people, the way you engage people, the way you judge people, who to ask for help and how to ask for help. A lot of those things are based on non-conscious assumptions and belief systems, the way you've been wired. And that's why it's important for you to understand this. That's why it's important for you to understand it because it's key. And for people of faith here, if you remember that scripture, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Or why is it important? Because it's not just your thinking. It's also your feeling and the processing that happens at the non-conscious level. That will go a long way to determine whether you'll be able to rise up in that change curve and accomplish your goal. This is really key and very important. I'm going to tell you very quickly about this law called Herb's Law. Herb's Law states that existing wiring does not deconstruct. So what that essentially means is that if you want, if you have an old habit, you will notice that that habit will be, will be difficult to get rid of. The reason why old habits die hard is because most habits are hardwired in the brain. So if you have a habit of... Um, let me choose a habit that maybe you have a habit of drinking a cup of tea or a cup of, cup of coffee in the morning and you, it becomes a part of you. To stop that habit will be very difficult because every morning you get a craving. That craving is mediated by the neuronal networks that are in your brain and are hardwired. And every habit, if you look at every habit, every habit has a trigger, a cue. And for you, the cue for your habit may be the fact that you see the sunlight. Once you see sunlight, all right, that triggers something in your brain, coffee. So the response is coffee, sunlight, coffee, sunlight, coffee. Every exposure, you get the exposure to the stimulus, the response is a, you know, a desire for coffee. So those neurons in the brain, which connect to it together, you know, you have that synapse. We call that the coffee synapse. Just put on me, I use that, the coffee synapse. All right, you wake up in the morning, you see sunlight, the next thing, boom, that reaction, chemical reaction happens in your brain and you have a craving for a cup of coffee. 
All right. Now, let's assume you want to stop that because your doctor has told you coffee is probably driving your migraines. So you're having migraines and your doctor said, give up this coffee or you find it hard to do. Well, you will find it hard to do because those neural networks do not deconstruct. They won't just go away. Existing networks, that synapse, that connection, that network will not just disappear. So if you're going to form this new habit, all right, maybe your doctor says, well, if you see sunlight, maybe we've got to find a new habit for you. Rather than drinking a cup of coffee, maybe we'll get you to have uh, a glass of water. Well, if you try that for a week, you'll realize that it will be difficult for you to sustain. If you, every time you see sunlight, if you take a glass of water, you will probably give up after one or two weeks. It will be very hard for you to sustain. And you may go back to your coffee because that network is still there. So existing wiring does not deconstruct. So how are you going to create this new habit? The only way you can create this new habit is by creating new wiring. And that's what I'm going to wrap up with. How do you create new wiring within your brain so that you can create new habits that way you can execute what you intend to do. So if you intend to start a new, you know, to start exercising, you intend to start learning new language, learning new equipment, you start starting new projects, you can create habits, all right, and not go back to those old habits, those habits that are not helpful for you as a leader. Habits, emotional habits, behavioral habits, think thought patterns, um, habits that are based on negative thought patterns where you judge things incorrectly. You don't want to go back to those. But remember, those old habits are not going to die easily. Those wirings are still there. So the only way to create new habits is by creating new wiring. Very similar. The only way to get rid of old memories is to create new memories. You can't just forget old trauma. Some of you here, maybe somebody may be here, you're exposed to old trauma. You've been abused in the past and that's still haunting you. You're still carrying pain and there's a weight on your heart. Like, how am I going to get rid of this? How am I? Well, the only way you can do that, you can forgive, but you can't forget except you develop dementia, all right? So how are you going to get over your old painful memories? By creating new loving ones, by creating new positive memories, by starting from today. So if you're going to do, to create new memories, you start with what you have today. That is exactly what it is. So if I am going to give up my early morning coffee and start drinking water, I need to learn about herbs law and understand that my craving will not go away. And so some of you here, you will still feel the desire to do those things that you should not be doing. You'll still feel the craving because existing wiring does not deconstruct, but you can create new wiring, number one, through attention, and number two, through positive feedback. And I'm going to talk about that. Attention and positive feedback are the great, the, 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 the main ways of generating and creating new habits, attention and positive feedback. But before I do that, I like this slide. I like this slide a lot. I use it a lot every time I teach, all right? Now, this is um, a PET scan, a PET scan, a brain scan of a cocaine addict. But this cocaine addict has been off cocaine for decades, all right? So this man was a cocaine addict has not had a sniff of cocaine for decades, of cocaine, completely clean. Let's even make him a pastor. Let's make him a very spiritual man. Let's let's even say he's spirit-filled. It speaks in tongues. It lays hands on the sick. He heals the sick. But he was once a cocaine addict. All right? So this was a research done on this on, 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 on a man who was a cocaine addict. The first image here was um, the image of his brain while he was being shown a video of nature, you know, like a documentary of nature. As he was watching the video, all right, you could see that the brain, yeah, there was a bit of activity, but nothing really stands out in that scan. But this same man was then showed a video of somebody else snorting cocaine. And once he saw that, look at that, the amygdala. I didn't have time to talk about the amygdala. I'm not going to talk about it. That part of the brain, the main emotion generator, the main emotions generator of the brain, lead up. Existing wiring does not deconstruct. Decades after he had stopped sniffing cocaine, when he was shown a video of someone else doing it, his brain literally lit up. Literally. So what that tells you is that existing wiring does not deconstruct. Don't think that you don't have the tendency to go back to your old habits. You can. You still have that tendency. If you were here, you, you've had addictions in the past, you can still go back to those addictive behaviors if you expose yourself. So don't overestimate your capacity. The only way you can sustainably 
keep up with good behavior is by attention and positive feedback, attention and positive feedback, all right? I like this, Mrs. A quoted it earlier, Oliver Holmes said, a mind was stretched by a new idea, never regains its original dimensions, all right? And that's what neuroplasticity, some of you would have heard this term, neuroplasticity, which is the ability of the brain to change itself. The brain can actually rewire itself, and that's connected with formation of new ideas and new behaviors, okay? Very essential. I'm not gonna spend too much time here, I just want to go now into habit formation. So if you're going to form new habits, you need to mind the gap. So just imagine this is that network, that connection, that synapse between two nerve cells or two neurons. One of them brings the trigger, all oh, sunlight. The other one gives you the reaction, ah, oh, cup of coffee. And there's a gap between the two, all right? And I like this, mind the gap. Credit to um, Christian Hansen with this image, all right? What's that? Goal, attention, positive feedback. Goal, attention, positive feedback. So how do you form habits? Number one is identify the goal. Know your why. Start with the why. In the words of um, Simon Sinek, start with your why. Understand your purpose. Why do I want to start this new project? Why do I want to start this new outreach? Why do I want to start this new business? What is my why? What is a need for me? And what is in it? Why do I want to start this new leadership adventure? What is the reason? What is my why? You've got to start with your why. If you don't have a clear goal, if you don't have a clear goal, why do you want to start a new business? Is it for show? Is it to impress people? Why do you want to you know, build a new house? Why do you, know, why do you want to relocate? Why do you want to do what, what? What is your why? What is your goal? If you don't have a why and you just have a what and a how, you will get frustrated. Do you understand what I've said? If you don't have a why and all that you're going with is a what, all right, and a how, you will get frustrated. And I'm going to give you my formula very soon. I've got a formula for this. I'm going to give you that formula very soon. But you've got to start with the why. Have a clearly defined goal about what you want to achieve. So you've been to this conference, Legacy Conference. You've listened to all the speakers. What have you taken? I've got a goal. I want to lose weight. I want to lose 20 kilograms in the next six months. Good, clear goal. Make it very clear. Make sure it's achievable. Don't tell me you want to be the United States president and you are, you know, not even an American citizen. All right. Have a clear goal, a goal that is achievable. Let it be very clear. Let it be something that is related to what your purpose. Let it be something that is related to what you're being called to do. Have a clear goal because it starts with the why. It starts with the reason why you want to do it. And that's what's going to sustain you when that curve starts to go down. Your why is what will sustain you, not the what and the how. You may know the know-how. You may know what to do. You may know how to do it. But if you don't have a why should I do it, you will get frustrated very easily. You would start, but you would not finish. You would start, but you would give up. What will sustain you? What would lead to sustainable behavioral changes? Understanding the why. That's why it's difficult to get drug addicts out, out of off drugs. That's why it's difficult to get people who are stuck on to addictive behaviors like masturbation, pornography, all sorts. If they don't understand the why, they will not get off. So if you're a coach and you have somebody that you're coaching or you're a mentor or you're a pastor, or you're a leader, you're an influencer, and you have somebody under your tutelage that that is addicted that's the, you've got to help them find the why the reason why they have to stop what they're doing the reason why they need to create new wholesome behaviors the reason why they have to create new thinking patterns you keep fighting with your husband or you keep fighting with your wife you're in the same pattern of dysfunction hurting each other hurting each other both of you can't see the same you know you can't see eye to eye you keep fighting and that's just because over a period of time there's a trigger and there's a response you've created networks so every time you say something you think it the negative way. You take it the opposite way. You assign meanings to it. You fill in the gaps, even when there are, when it doesn't even mean it or she doesn't mean it. You fill in those gaps, and of course, your response becomes exaggerated, excessive, and sometimes dangerous. And at the end of the day, you keep going in that cycle. You got to change your habits. Wendy has spoken a lot about character and self leadership. Some of you are there. You've given up. You've given up. In the VIP session today, I was talking about learned helplessness. How a lot of people give up. They learn to be helpless. You've tried. You've applied for a grant over and over again because you've been rejected many times. You just give up on it. You give up on. You give up on trying. You give up on trying. You just. You just stop trying. You just stop trying because you've been rejected. It's a non-conscious thing. It happens at the subconscious level. It's in the mind. You've learned to be helpless. 
That's why you start applying for those grants. That's why you stopped applying. You know, I was sharing to the VIP in the VIP session today of a good friend of mine, and I'm sure he wouldn't mind that I share this. He, he, he came, a doctor like myself, hard worker, he came here, did an exam, the medical licensing exam, tried to get in, it was a bit challenging initially, then he went for a PhD, he finished his PhD, started lecturing, but he told me, he said, me, I, I want to get back into medical practice, I, I'm lecturing in the university, it's a good job, but I want to really practice medicine in Australia, and so I connected him with one of the people that I, resource people that could get him a job, but they just did not respond positively. It was not a positive response. We tried different places. He tried very hard. For about two years, he tried hard, hard, hard. Nothing came through. He just gave up. He went back to his lecturing thing. And he, so one day we invited him to our church to speak in our church. And we were having lunch together in a home. And while we were having lunch together, I asked him about that desire to practice medicine. And he said, oh, no, uh, he was giving excuses. You could see that the motivation was gone. He, you could see that the drive was gone. He had learned to be helpless. He had resolved in his heart, you know, uh, that's it. And I said, no, bro, we've got to try one more time. You got to try one more time. And if there's somebody here right now, you've given up. You got to try one more time. Fight one more round. Fight one more round. Even when your face is bruised and swollen, fight one more round. Your lips are swollen as if you've got Botox, you've had Botox injection, fight one more round. Your, your back aches, your ribs are cracked, your liver is sore, your legs are wobbly, your knees are painful, fight one more round. Your ankles are shaking, fight one more round. The arms are so heavy, you can't even lift up your arms to guard your face, fight one more round. Fight one more round, fight one more round. Keep swinging, try one more time. Try one more time. I know you've given up. Try again. You gotta try again. Listen, the man who fights one more round is never knocked out. You may be knocked down, but you will never be knocked out. If you've been knocked down, you pick up yourself and you say, I'm starting again. Yes, I've, I've, I've failed. You heard John say, your socks, your failure is part of your success. You've got to fail forward. Your failure has to be brought together with your success. You've got to pick up yourself from the dust. Stop the sympathy party. Stop the pity party. It's time to get up, dust, shake off the dust and say, I'm going again. I am going again because you know you found your why. Because you found your why. Do you know I told my my friend i told him i said send an email right now to the same man he said but I, but the last time he wasn't really encouraging him to send an email so my friend sent an email and when he sent the email within two minutes less than two minutes i got a phone call from the same man he called me and he said hey your friend just sent me an email i didn't know he was still looking for a job is he still is he still there is he available i said yes sir he's looking for a job so i didn't know that he was still looking for a job the opportunity was not available then but there's an opportunity right now that's why it was on a sunday <laughs> it was a clinical superintendent of a hospital calling us on a sunday do you know that before the end of the call everything was settled within a month or two my friend was working in a hospital today he's training to become a neurosurgeon from being a lecturer today is training in australia training to become a neurosurgeon fight one more round you've been knocked down for one year for two years you've been rejected you've tried it you've tried it you've failed you've dropped out this is the time to pick it up and you're going to start to create healthy habits you're going to start to create healthy habits you're not going to give up like before when you get the trigger when the cost is hard oh no 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 i can't do it no 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 the i can't do it is a habit it's wired in your brain I can't do it. I can't do it. You just start. You, you, you'll never finish anything. They, they take you for spiritual prayers and, you know, all kinds of stuff. You know, fight one more round. You've got to learn that it's hardwired. Now you have to create new pathways. So when the trigger comes, that tiredness, that wave comes, you've got to find a new way to express it. You've got to find a new way to say, okay, yes, when that comes, I'm going to have my affirmations, my positive affirmations. I'm going to say to myself, I can do it. I'm going to rely, get some you know, attention and positive feedback. So if you're going to create a, a, a habit, it starts with a goal. Identify the goal. And then if you identify the goal, you direct enough attention to that goal, all right, and positive feedback, then you would be able to achieve it. You, If you direct enough attention and positive feedback to it, you will be able to achieve it. You see, your attention is your most prized possession. Today in the VIP session, I talked about selective attention. Your attention is your most prized possession. Guys, your attention, I am vying for your attention right now. Some of you are watching this stream and you're doing something else. Well, a lot of things are competing for your attention. Your attention is your most prized asset as an individual. Everybody wants your attention. Even God wants your attention. Your kids, your family, your spouse, everybody wants your attention. 
Your attention has to be guided. When you identify that goal, you've got to direct the focus of your attention to it. And that means you may have to let go of other things. You have to let go of other things and direct. And once you select that goal, you know what happens? Your cognitive resources become directed towards it. Have you noticed that when you want to buy a car, you start thinking about the car, you start seeing the same car all over. It's a not. It's not magic. It's not that more cars are produced. You know, I drive a small Magster car. I just started, I realized that when I got the car, I started seeing a lot of cars like mine. Now, Magster has not produced more of the CX3 brand, brand. They've not produced more. In fact, during the lockdown, you know, with the logistics problem, with world global shipping and all that, cars were very hard to find. But I started picking them out because I had one. I just bought one. When you identify your goal, your, and you focus your attention on, on that goal, you will start to meet people that will connect with your dream. You will start to meet people that are in the same pursuit of your dream. You start to meet people that will connect with you, that will support you. You start to meet people that will help you. But when you do not focus your attention, I just have it somewhere there, you will not be alert to perceive and to see people around you. And of course, when you are working towards the goal, you've got to have positive feedback. You've got to reward yourself. Very essential that you do that. Remember that 50, in fact, up to 70% of what you do every day is driven by habit. You know, I learned this in medical school, in my first year of medical school. And what I learned was this, the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. Successful people do daily what unsuccessful people do once in a while. If you're able to understand how habits are formed, you understand the triggers, you understand your response, and you now create an alternative response to that trigger. So when you wake up in the morning, instead of having a cup of coffee, you start to you know make sure you take away all the coffee and get the jug of water. And you start to create an alternative pathway. So I feel tired, I'm going to get water. I feel tired, I'm going to get water. I feel tired, I'm going to get water. I studied, neuroscience tells us that a minimum of three weeks is required to form a habit. Now, that's not for everyone. Some people actually, the science tells us that it may take up to, you know, about half a year, six months. But if you do something consistently every day, it will become a habit. It doesn't mean you'll be an expert, but it will become a way of life. The other day, someone called me and said, hey, my son is doing this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know what? Why not for the next three weeks, get your son to do this every single day for three weeks. And every time they do it well, reward them, positive feedback, reward them. Reward yourself. You set a goal, you achieve it, reward yourself. Reward yourself. And reward yourself may be going for a spa treatment. It could be going for a walk, a massage. It could be watching a nice movie. It could be, you know, going to a nice place, doing something nice. Reward yourself. And when you fail, pick yourself up. One other way you can actually have good positive feedback is accountability. Very essential to have accountability. Without accountability, it will be very hard for you to, you know, direct your attention because a lot of distractions are there. Someone said a distraction is an attraction that is vying for your attention. That's true. Distractions are attractive. Distractions will veer, take you away from your cause. Distractions will take you away from your goal. Distractions will take you away from your target. Distractions will take you away. So a lot of you, you will face distractions. That's why you need accountability. You need someone to be to hold you and to hold you accountable. And sometimes you may not be able to do it yourself. You may need someone to guide you. And sometimes you may hold yourself accountable. You may actually coach yourself and, you know, and you can do that with journaling and writing things down. So there are a lot of ways of doing it, but you've got to find what would work for you. All right. Coaching may work for you. Coaching doesn't work for everyone. Some of you have mentors. You may need to lean on your mentors to hold you accountable with this new project, with this new goal, with this new dream, so that you can keep focused. You can keep working on it. You don't stop. You don't stop moving. You don't stop swinging. You don't stop going. You know, I have a, um, a fitness coach. This week has been very exhausting, as you can imagine, with this conference. And I still had to go to the gym. I've been to the gym twice this week. I should be there four times. I've managed to go twice. And the two times I went to the gym was because I had appointments with my fitness trainer. And I was going to pay him anyway. So because I know I'd paid, I had to show up. If I didn't show up, then I'll lose my money. As tired as I was, as exhausted as I was, as sleep deprived as I was, I still went. And of course, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't show me mess. In fact, I told my wife the other day when I came from my last session that I begged him that the last exercise, after grilling me for an hour, he wanted me to do biceps calls. I said, biceps calls, I've got legacy. I begged him, I said, please. But that's it. He was holding me accountable. He was like, you know what? You're going to put, put on the pounds. You're not going to be fit. You're going to do all of it. Yeah, that's what coaching does. That's what coaching does. 
he didn't lift up the weights for me. I did. But he will stay there and say, you can do it. One more. One more. Yeah. Try harder. Try harder. That's positive feedback. That's positive feedback. Now, do you know how uncomfortable it is for me? I've been going to the gym now every week for the last 12 months. Do you know how uncomfortable it is, how incomplete I feel when I do not go to the gym? I love it. I don't like walking around like some people like walking. You know, you've got to find what works for you. I like the gym environment. I go in there. But it didn't start the first time. In fact, the first time I got a membership to the gym, I got a 12-month membership to the gym. I only went three, four times, and I stopped going. And I wasted my money. I said, I'll go next week. I'll go next week. I wasted my money. I did a 12-month membership. I paid for 12 months. I said, yes, I'm good. I'm motivated. I only went four times. I didn't go. So the next time my, my doctor told me, Doc, you've got to lose a few pounds. You've got to feed. You've got to be this. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go back to the gym, but this time I'm going to get a coach. And even though I'm paying a little bit more for my fitness coach, I realized that without my fitness coach, I'm too busy. That's the excuse. I'm too busy. I've got this. I've got that. I've got this. I've got the church. I've got that. I've got sometimes Sunday mornings before church, I would be in the gym. All right. I will be there meditating. I'll be there walking out because it's the quietest time. It was quiet time. So guys, you've got to understand that accountability is essential and you may need that for positive feedback. Also, collaboration, having a great network, having peers that you would work with, working with people. How, you know, someone said your network will determine your net worth. That's true. Uh, working with people that are of the same mind, having a team around you, people that will help you, that will inspire you. People that will push you up, people that will encourage you and push you on, very essential if you're going to be successful. And finally, I'm going to talk about this threat that you need to walk, watch out for. In this journey, your journey to legacy, your journey in beauty to, to building your legacy, you want to create new habits. You've identified your goal. You're going to be paying attention to that goal and you're going to be rewarding yourself with positive feedback to build those new habits. But watch out for these threats. Because these threats can derail you. These threats can pull you down. All right? And it's the absence of these six things. Any of them. And we're all different. For some of you, what's the most important thing for you is autonomy. Autonomy is that you want to be, you only thrive when you're autonomous. You don't want to be micromanaged. You don't want to be pushed around. And when you're in that state of, what tips you into a threat is when you lack autonomy. When you can control what happens to you, you can control the environment. You've got to watch out for that. You've got to understand yourself. What are the emotional threats? What are the threats that tip me into that negative state I do not want to be? For some people, it's certainty. All they want is certainty. All right, you just want to be certain. But listen, we live in uncertain times. Inflation, wars, and oil prices are up. Everything is, and there's a lot of uncertainty. And for some of you right now, you're in a threat state because you don't have certainty. You're not even sure about the job that you have. You're not even sure what will happen in the next six months. You're not even sure about the boyfriend you have, whether I would marry you. You're so uncertain about the relationship. You're certain about how things will turn out. And that's drowning you. You've got to find a way to deal with that. For other people, it's a lack of connection. For some, it's equality, lack of equality. What matters to you is just being treated equal. And you're not getting that. For some people, it's status. By that, it means, you know, having the respect people treating you with respect. And that may be an issue. The lack of respect, the fact that you're not being respected may be an issue. I mean, it's not necessarily pride. It's not necessarily a desire for position, but you just want that self-respect. And for others, it's the lack of safety. For you, maybe it's just, you just want to be in a safe environment. You just want to be safe. And all of these things can be triggers. So you got to watch out for these triggers, all right? And you may need to really address them and create habits around them and behaviors and systems around them that will help you overcome these threats because they will drag you down. So just to summarize what I have said, you've heard a lot about legacy. You've heard a lot during legacy. You've heard John's talk and you've heard Wendy's talk. And you've heard Dr. Sam's talk. You've heard so many talks. And what I'm telling you is that this is a time to act, but you're not going to feel the way you're feeling now all the time. You're not going to feel inspired all the time. You're not going to feel motivated all the time. You're going to feel down at times. So you must learn to inspire yourself. You must learn to cope. Let me give you a quick formula, and then I'll bring this to a close. In order to drive change, all right, I don't have it on the slides, so I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to, um, um, I'm just going to say, say, in order to drive change, okay, if you want to drive sustainable change, you need four things, four things to drive sustainable change, four 
things to need to drive sustainable change. Um, I'm actually thinking that maybe I should just write it out there on the screen for you guys to see. It may be easier that way. So just give me a second. I will just um, um, I will just uh, stop sharing this for a second, um, and I will just write it up for you to see. Um, I will um, just give me a second. I will just put it up there. So in order for you to, to have sustainable change, for sustainable change to happen, all right, you need four things. And I'm going to talk about those four things. Number one, vision. We've talked about vision. And I'm not, I'm not going to elaborate on that. You have to have a clear vision, your goal, your why. You've got to understand your why. So your vision is really essential. You've got to have a clear vision. All right? Very essential. If you're going to have, if you're going to, create sustainable change you need it's essential you need to have a clear vision so the first one is v vision v for vision all right the second thing that i would mention there is m for motivation so v for vision m for motivation all right just give me a second now let me think i'm set up now i will just um i will just um, share my screen so that it'd be a lot easier particularly for those was scribbling down. Okay, so I think I'm good to go. So I said V for vision, all right? And then the next one, M, all right. So for sustainable change, the first thing is V for vision. M for motivation, you've gotta be motivated. That's really essential. So vision plus motivation. So first one, number one, it's vision. All right, number two, all right, motivation. Good, can you see my screen? Um, can you just um, share my screen, please? Good, and then number three, all right, capacity. Good, and then number four, strategy. So if you're going to have any successful change, you've got to combine vision with motivation, with capacity and strategy. Now, let me tell you what happens when you do not do that. You may run into trouble when you do not do that. You may run into trouble when you do not do that. So vision plus motivation plus capacity plus strategy is what is the way to go. And if you do not do that, you would run into trouble. So I'm going to just put up, put up another slide just to illustrate what would happen when you do not do that. Okay. All right. So let me go back there. So V plus M plus C plus S is equals to change. Positive change, transformational change. That's what you want. But on the other hand, if you don't have V, so you don't have a vision, but you're motivated and you have capacity and you have strategy, you know what that's called? That's called a false start. So if you don't have a clear vision, but you're motivated, you've got the capacity, you've got strategy and you just go on, it will lead to a false start. You'll fizzle out. You'll fizzle out. You'll fizzle out very quickly. And you see a lot of people will start very strong, but they can't last because they don't have a why. They do because others do it. They do it because others want it. All right. I'm rounding up now. But if you have a vision, but you lack motivation, but you have capacity and you have strategy, that's a fledging start. You have the vision, but you're not motivated. You've learned to be helpless. You have the vision, you have the capacity, you have the strategy, but you lack the motivation. You just be fledging, all right? You will never achieve what you need to achieve. But if you have vision, you have motivation, all right? You lack the capacity. Capacity may be funding. It may be the connection. It may be network, and you will have strategy. You know what that is? That's a frustrating start. So a lot of people are frustrated because 
they have a clear vision. Some of you are there, your, your vision is clear. You know what to be, you should be doing. You're motivated enough to do it, but you just don't like, you don't have capacity. You don't have the resources. You don't have the people to help you do it. You, the strategy is clear. It's frustrating. All right, vision, motivation is there. The capacity is there, but there's no strategy. Sorry, this is not a false start. This is a fast start. <laughs> Fast start. The first one is a fast. You start fast, but you fizzle out. This is a false start. A false start. You know what a false start is? If you see an athlete on a 100 meters race, jump the gun. That's a false start. There's a clear vision. There's a motivation. There's capacity, but strategy fails. That's a false start. So if I were you, I would focus on this. What in this in this whole scenario, this formula, what is it that I am missing? Do you have a clear vision? Are you motivated enough? Do you have you build capacity and strategy? And of course, sometimes you need somebody to help you. You need somebody to hold your hands and help you build all of this. All right. And the good thing about this is that both myself and um, Wendy, Wendy Burns and Dr. Sam are people that can help you in this journey, all right? So if you're there and you need help, certainly you can reach out to me. I am committed to helping you in your journey. I'm committed to helping you in your journey. It will cost you something, absolutely, because my time is not free. But if you're serious enough to want to create lasting change and you want me to help you with my understanding of how the brain works to create sustainable behavioral change and sustainable change in your world, in your environment, in your organization, then you should reach out to me because I would help you walk through that journey for three months to build up a strategy that would help you deliver results that are outstanding and results that are sustainable because I'm not just going to teach what I do not know. I am actually going to teach what I've applied and what I know. I'm able to take you through that journey. Wow. What a session. <laughs> I've come to the end of my talk and I hope that you've gotten a lot of value from this. It's been an amazing time. So it's time for you right now to get up and start doing what you've been called to do. You can't afford to wait. Time is not on your side. Don't dilly-dally. Don't wait. Don't push it. Don't delay. It's time to rise up. Dr. Sam and Wendy, you can come up right now. It's time for you to rise up. It's time for you to do something. It's time for you to move. It's time for you. The time is now. This is your season. Thank you for listening. The time wow. is now. Wow. <laughs> yes, Amazing. 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 Wendy, how has it been for you? Uh, I, I want to say my brain is tired from so much uh, input, but I don't want to say that because I don't want to create a bad habit by saying that, right, Dr. Nee? I'm at, I'd absolutely loved it. I've taken so many notes. I thought yeah. I knew everything that I know, but this is just <laughs> more. This is just... Yes. Yeah, between John's so session good. and this. And I love formulas. You saw that in my VIP session today. So you speak to my heart with formulas. And I love the fact that the things that I know that I teach and I teach mm. and, you know, that I'm teaching what you're teaching without that formula of the brain. Now I've got that, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice, that sense of how the brain operates with it. Just so powerful. Like the only word I can say is powerful and and you're right, you've said it, the time is now. We have imported, we have given, we have loved on, yes. we've imparted hope, we've given you every tool that you can need, could, could, could use, I should say, every word of encouragement, but the time is now and we know mm -hmm. the individual person needs to take the action. And mm. to me, you've said it beautifully on how that can, can happen. So thank you. Wow, what a great session, gentlemen.
Wow. Such a great session. Such a great session. And um, Dr. Nee, thank you so much for giving us. You started from in the threat versus the reward state, you know, and then you took us all the way into understanding yeah. our, our, our subconscious mind and our conscious mind works, patterns that have influenced our lives and, you know, and keep shaping our lives. On, and then you went on to Hebb's Law. Man, that was powerful. Existing wiring does not deconstruct. Many people struggle with habits and they struggle to break it. And you also gave us the, the, the formula to create new habits. You said, creating new habits require that we develop new wirings to 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 you sort of like you know erase old memories we've got to create new ones very powerful and to form new habits to give us the gap the gap uh, framework which which goals yes. attention positive i love that because i'm a purpose coach so it's good to, <laughs> it's one of the resources that i'm going to use you know going forward and then you you took us on you know how to create sustainable change and that was mm. where we ended phenomenal stuff i have questions but because of our time we're just going to take questions from our audience all right um we, we saw a few questions while you were yeah. rounding off number one of them is from jumaki adorom who she said please can you explain better the access threat you know you know how when you 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 give us those threats to watch out for all right um autonomy certainty connection e e equality status and safety or recommend a book uh, or resource that 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 uh, we need to read more on that uh, well, the resource I would recommend is my masterclass. So if you come from my masterclass, <laughs> of course, the neuroscience of leadership and um, an influence on the 20th of September. So Jumake, you should register for that. We're going to talk a lot more about um, access and those threats. Um, so the lack of access is what creates threats for a lot of people. And I thought mm -hmm. I should identify that. You will have to, it's just like the love languages if you are familiar with those, you know. So you need to know exactly what tips you into a threat state. The lack of access, What? which of those? For a lot of people, it's one. For some people, it's two. So some people will not bother about equality. You know, mm -hmm. equality is not an issue for them or status is not an issue for them, but they want autonomy. Yeah. They cannot... Mm -hmm function in an environment where they do not have the freedom to express themselves all right yeah. and some some young people have that if you're a leader and you're leading people you need to be aware of your the people you're leading what motivates them what makes them thrive and if you're a leader you got to find out exactly what tips you into threat is it a lack of certainty mm -hmm. that just makes you go a while like oh my god i can't function so it's very important to understand that it's for self-reflection so you know what areas to work on if you like autonomy and you don't have autonomy now how can you manage the situation in a way that you're not persistently moody and feeling that you're micromanaged and feeling that you're under pressure but you can still thrive and release your gifting so that you can achieve mm. what you need to achieve that's the point awesome uh someone said you know when is the next session <laughs> this is the final session this 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 has been like a master class already so you can now imagine if you register for dr nee's next master class you'll be loaded and your head will be hot um and that's why you should all right because i believe that the net that master class is the continuation of this one and you don't want to hear part one and not see part two so go ahead right now uh you know and and and, and get that sorted okay all right um the next question is from my dad and he's asking how do i build capacity so in one of the frameworks she gave to us in terms of vision motivation capacity um uh, and strategy and he's asking how do i build capacity uh well um, capacity is a combination of your journey your experience and all of that so let me give an example look at us today Two years ago, this was legacy was in, in existence. I felt a burden. I found the goal. I found the why. I needed to reach out to people. I reached out to my friend, Same Kundaya. I said, Same Kundaya, you know, you've been talking to me about doing this and doing that. I am ready. When mm. you told me that I wasn't ready, now I'm ready. So he said, you know what? <laughs> He said, I joined the Jomato team. Let's go there and build capacity. So we joined the Jomato yeah. team. And I won. it was on one of those co um, coaching calls that I met Wendy Burns, all right, for the first time. So I was building capacity. And then from there, I went to another coaching call. And then I went to another different program. And then I went to the MIT to learn on the neuros and learn about the neuroscience of leadership and business. All right. So I was building capacity. So I didn't just come up here to just, you know, I didn't just appear. All right. Mm, mm, I've been to mm. medical school. I'm a trained neurologist. I've gone through all of those things. All of those things are important. So your experiences in life, your exposure. Now, when you find exactly what you need to do, you've got to start reading. If I t show yeah. you how many books I have on neuroscience of leadership, you'll be amazed. I have almost every book that is credible on the topic. So that's how you build capacity. And then when you meet people, 
you know, credit mm. today's we need to credit Wendy Burns. You know, a lot of people are asking me, Nidhi, how did you get John? Come on, give Wendy Burns yeah. a round of applause. <laughs> all right. Amazing. She helped us a lot in getting John Maxwell down here. But you know what? I also had to make the connection with her. And when I saw her, I said, Wendy, come mm. and coach. I listened to Wendy and I said, you know what? Wendy, I want you to coach me. I want I want something deeper. So you got to be mm. intentional. You can I get a lot of emails. Oh, Doctor Nee, can you mentor me, Doctor Nee? Can you do this? Can you? No, 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 no. A lot of all those are not people who are really you be intentional. Mm. You be intentional, and you got to be ready to commit yourself and sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah awesome awesome stuff uh and we have a lot of people asking about your coaching um so here is uh iwala asking that they're interested in the three months coaching how much is it what's the link again to get that please what's the link for the coaching i see somebody else asking as well um, so about that i think you should can we just put up the email address um so just put up our email and just send us an email address and um, send us okay. an email and we will give you all the details okay we've got one-on-one -on -one coaching we've got group coaching as well so if you want to come in a group we will be able to facilitate that as yeah. well so there was one uh, question there sorry yeah. sam uh, one question there how do you join the john maxwell team contact yes. me and I'll, I'll sort you out so there was yeah. one question just contact me uh, and i'll sort you out absolutely and if you're in all australia right. in new zealand um, png in the pacific wendy burns is our leader in the john maxwell team <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so if you want to uh, uh, join Dr. Nee's coaching, uh, specifically Dr. Nee's one, all right, for those who are asking the, that question, uh, please go right now to email him at info at kneeboyrate.com. All right, it will be on the screen there so you don't miss out a word. Somebody said, how do we access the paid VIP session that we missed? Oh, you are going to get a recording sent to your email. That uh, we can assure you. We have provisions to make sure that you get the recording in your email. All right, somebody, um, should we just take about two or three more questions, Dr. Nee? Is that okay? Yeah. Two, two more? Yeah, yeah. Wendy, what do you think? Two more? Yeah, that's, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, okay all right so um apart from people asking for coaching there are some really very powerful questions here one of them is how can i consciously change my paradigm about transformational change even when at times while on the lane i feel like i'm not doing enough i do thirst for more i believe yeah or maybe how do i thirst for more or something like that i do thirst for more well that thirst that you're experiencing is a message that you're on the right track and that you need to dig deeper all right so when people you feel when you feel that you're on the right lane as long as you know your why as long as you have a clear goal you know exactly you're in the right place your purpose is clear and you're in your right lane you may feel discontent about the output about what you're getting the results you're getting I've told you, you know, that valley of little disappointment, which is when you don't see the results. You know, there's a famous, uh, famous saying um, um, about, about uh, the man, uh, the stonemason, who was trying to break stone, and he hits the stone about 101 times, 101 strikes to break the stone. And the, the author said the first strike is as important as the 101st strike. All right. Mm. But after the first strike, you don't see anything. You don't even see anything. Yeah. You don't see a crack. Some of you, you've been hitting the same stone for five times, six times. There's no crack. And then suddenly, mm. seventh one, boom, it breaks. So you've got to find a way to keep yourself motivated enough to keep doing that. All right. Yeah. That unease that you're feeling may just be a signal for you to keep going and keep pushing. All right. Of course, you need to find people around you to help you sustain your energy. All right. Um, and so that's what I would say um, to that. But it's certainly possible. And, and you frame the question right. Consciously change your paradigm about transformational change. You can do that, but it takes a lot of effort and positive, positive reinforcement. All right. Somebody's asking again, how do I don't join Maxwell team? Just email Wendy. Uh, email is right on there uh, on the screen right now. Email Wendy and you can join the John Maxwell team. Wendy will get you some really good discount. <laughs> I All right. Some, yeah, there's some really good questions here. We'll just take two more, just two more. Sorry, everyone. We, because of time, we just have to only, we can only take two more. Uh, somebody's asking, please, Dr. Nee, in what ways can we build, cons can we stay consistent and build urgency towards our goals when our minds tells us to slow down or stop? Well, I think it's the same thing. So one of the things I didn't talk about today was the reward system. 
all right, mm -hmm. um, the reward system, activating your reward system. So there are two main systems in the brain. There's a stress system and the reward system. The stress system gets you started. Every time you need, you want to start something, there's something we call arousal stress. Arousal stress is what makes you finish your assignment two hours before the deadline. You knew you had the assignment three months before, mm. but you don't watch it until two hours. That's arousal stress. It's meant to get you started. And a lot of us don't know how to unleash our arousal stress early enough to get our tasks done on time. So two hours to the deadline is when we start. And then, but what happens is that if you're going to rely on stress, your stress system to get you through the journey, you're going to collapse. So it's just like running a marathon. You can start the marathon with some stress, without arousal stress, but it will not sustain you through the journey. People quit because they can't manage stress. That's the main thing. And there's a hormone that mediates that, mm -hmm. that, that, that helps us with the stress system, which is adrenaline or no adrenaline and no adrenaline or epinephrine. So those are the hormones. They're the stress hormones that help us move. But the problem is that they cannot sustain us. So the other system called the reward system is what you really need. So you need to find ways of activating your reward system, which is mediated by dopamine. And that's some of the things that I will be teaching when we come to that masterclass, how do I activate my reward system? So that even when my legs are achy, as I'm running the marathon and I feel like giving up, I can activate enough of dopamine in my brain and I can activate my reward systems enough to keep me motivated to say, you know, I am going there. Even though I feel like going, I'm going to keep pushing myself, keep pushing myself. All right. It's not simple, but it's doable. And there are a lot of people who do that. Awesome. Awesome. But Thank question. you. Yeah. One last question. Yes. Um, um, I'm struggling between these three questions that I have in front of me here. They're very wonderful questions. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm going to be biased. I'm going to ask my dad's last question. Dad said, give more details about strategy, especially strategy execution. What's your idea and how do you make your strategy to work? Well, I think this is just... Um, depends on every person all right so when you have your clear vision okay let's say your vision is to learn how to play a musical instrument let's say saxophone you want to learn how to play the saxophone okay it's a clear vision you understand your why you know the why the reason behind the desire all right and you've clarified the vision and you're motivated enough you've attended a, a seminar you've seen somebody who's inspired you about the saxophone you're motivated enough now the next thing is to build capacity all right that means you got to take some you have to you know get money to register for classes you need to pay a uh, saxophone saxophonist to teach you coach you train you and then you have to start practicing but then you need to have a strategy of how to carry it out so your strategy mm -hmm. will depend on your vision it will depend on your capacity so your strategy will depend on your vision and your capacity. If you're a teens, uh, you're a teens coach. You want to coach teens, and you are in Africa. It's going to be completely different from the teens that you have in Australia. Your strategy will depend on your vision, the people you've been sent to, sure. and the capacity that you have. If, for example, you're you're, you're you've got enough money to take people for camping and take the teenagers for camping. That's the capacity you have. But if you, don't, you can't do that. You can have a Zoom meeting. So your strategy will depend on your vision and your capacity. It's not the same for everyone, but you need to be able to execute them. When you have all of these four ingredients, your change will become sustainable. But a lot of people miss one of these things out. And that's what coaching does. So for example, if you're with Wendy or with Dr. Sam, this I will ask what they will break down for you. What's your vision? All right. Yeah. What are the motivation factors and what are the things that do not motivate you? So we go back to access. Access connects a lot with motivation. OK, what are the things that discourage you in this? All right. Mm. And then what are those? What what capacity do you have now? What do you have? How mm. can we get this done? And now let's work out a strategy that will help us achieve this. And when you have that, boom, you're in, you're in business. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nii. I think we've come to the end of the questions now. Thank you, everyone that I've joined today. I see some uh, random questions that I believe we can quickly answer. Um, somebody is asking, you know, do we all have a podcast or anything? Yes. Follow us all on social media and you find out all of the details of our podcast or go to all, each of our websites. All right. Um, so that's our, our, our um, social media stuff there. I'm just going to hand it over to Dr. Nii. Dr. Nee is going to talk to us right now. Please don't go anywhere because the winners of um, the Legacy Challenge, all right, if you are if you partook in the Legacy Challenge, please stay behind. You might just be winning some hundreds of dollars. So if you go home, I will take your money. Let, let, 
I'm, I'm saying it up front now. I will personally put my hand up for your money, so don't go anywhere. I'll let Dr. Nii talk about his products and some of his masterclasses coming soon. And thereafter, uh, Coach Wendy will do the same, and then I'll do the same, and then we'll go into the Legacy Challenge announcement. Dr. Nii, over to you, sir. Uh, yeah, just very quickly, thanks for um, supporting us and being here for us. As you probably would know, um, um, what we've done here, we've given out a lot of value. Getting John Maxwell and all these people, we've done it for mm -hmm. you at no cost. It's not because it's free. There's nothing free under the sun, but we've done it at no cost because we feel it's the right thing to do, to be a blessing. And hopefully you can, what you can do to pay us back is to share the link with people around, yes. let people watch these videos, bless their lives. If you have young people out there who are struggling in any way, send them this link, let them watch all of the different sessions. They will find it beneficial. If you live in the United Kingdom, if you live in the United Kingdom, you should come to this event. Come and meet me uh, I'm in London, all right, I'll be at the Double Tree by Hilton Hotel in London. Can we just take away this banner? Yeah, yes, yeah. Double Tree by Hilton Hotel in London. Please come and meet me. I'll be there on the 4th of September. It would be an amazing event, okay? We have very limited seats, all right? So you've got to register to attend this event. And I would also be, two days later, I'll be in Geneva in Switzerland on the 6th of September. So if you're anywhere around that area or in Europe, want to take a short flight fine come over <laughs> we're going to um be i'm talking about peak performance and how you can be your best self remember you can always connect with us and of course um the master class that we talked about it's valued at 500 dollars, but we're giving you a very healthy discount so you can register and listen if you're a part of this master class certainly if you were not in the vip session you will get all of the um, recordings of the VIP session. And we've told those who attended the VIP session too that they would be automatically admitted to this masterclass. And as I've said earlier on, you can join my coaching programs. Those coaching programs are available. You're free to join. Of course, I've got books as well. All right. Um, my books are available. Um, I'm just going to put up those books. All right. Navigating Change, Victoria Sata, Ega, Changing You. And there's another one in the. Um, um, Watkins, both changing you and overcoming um, uh, on pre-order, so you can pre-order them. Um, if you want to learn more about the brain and the mind and how you can change your world, I've got 10 very powerful models that you can purchase. Okay, so if you go to um, my website, either legacyconsoles.com.au slash product or kneeborere.com slash product, you will be able to get any of those. So I hope I've been a big blessing to you and I hope Legacy has been a big blessing to you. So get all of these resources. They are meant to be a blessing and to help you become the person you have been designed to become. Thanks, Wendy. Okay, great. Thanks, Dr. Nee. Uh, I have a QR code that I'm going to get um, pop up on the screen shortly. But before it goes up, uh, I just want to tell you, I've got a call for action for you. I have four actions that you can do so I can continue to add value to you. And on that QR code, it will take you to those actions. Uh, the first one is you can sign up for the second edition of my book, Remarkable You. It's got my limited edition is out of print. The second edition went on sale this week. It just has a blue cover with a couple of tiny changes. You can go in there and you can pre-order that. That would be fabulous. It's already a bestseller, but it will take it further up the list. And I would love you to do that. And my second book is coming not long after the second edition is launched. And that's Unmasked to Remark Your Life. So if you sign up for the first, the second edition of my first book, Remarkable You, you'll autom automatically be made aware of the second book when it comes out. The second action, check out my coaching specials. I've got a coaching special just for Legacy, but it's a very short uh, space that it's available. So check that out on the QR code. And the third thing, sign up for my uh, wait list for my leadership podcast with Kirsten Williams. You met her last night on the panel. We're doing a leadership podcast called Leadership as Prescribed. So be sure to get on the wait list so you can be included in that. And number four, very simple. If you go to that QR code, which you can pop up now, as you go through that page, that landing page, at, it'll show you how to sign up for my newsletter. It's a free newsletter. Again, I want to add value. I want to continue to serve you and add value to you on a regular basis. Four things that you can do for me that will really bless me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being part of Legacy. Oh, thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you. You are a great coach. 
Um, and um, anyone listening to this right now, and you're a woman, uh, you you know you've seen many of the women walking with Wendy. Look at how so much they sh- you know they shone yesterday as stars because Wendy's been walking with them for 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 the, for some time. So you two can shine. So go ahead right now and email Wendy. Her email is on the screen right now. Okay, don't miss out on that. And I know somebody, some people might be saying, Doctor Sam, what about your coaching? Okay, yeah, now, we want to know about you, Doctor Sam. You have. So- so much to offer. <laughs> All right, right now, the first thing I want everyone in this room listening to this right now is to go and get my free book. I have a free gift for you. So go ahead right now and get this free book. It's free book. It's a free book. It's titled The World Needs You, Life-Changing Secrets to Becoming a Person of Value. I wrote that book because I found it a principle that is very powerful and I thought I would help people expand on it. And that principle is that if you're going to be successful, do not seek success. Instead, seek to become a person of value. Hence, I wrote that book. And as I was done writing it, God said, give it out for free. Oh, okay. So here's my obedience. All right. Um, The book is titled, The World Needs You, Life-Changing Secrets to Becoming a Person of Value. Go ahead right now to legacy.samuelekondayot.com legacy.samuelacondow.com and you can download that book for free. You'll get the PDF in your email, all right? If you are interested in my coaching, I don't coach everybody, okay? I only coach people who have a calling, all right, to be a speaker, a trainer, a coach, an author, a consultant, or a thought leader, all right? You've got to be one of those, all right? If you are any of those and you need a coach in your life, all you need to do right now is go to samuelekondayo.com slash coaching or you email ea at samuelekondayo.com, all right? And all of the details will be sent across to you. But you can also get access to all of the details, right? My coaching comes with some of my courses and so on and so forth. If you haven't discovered your purpose and you want to discover God's purpose for your life, the School of Purpose and Influence is that place to come to. Right now we're in session, so we're not admitting anyone right now. We have our flagship course, which is a 15-week course. It takes people who are truly committed to change (laughs) to stay through a 15-week course. And most of the lectures are live. The spin has changed many lives. Any spin night in the house or alumni, you can put it in the chat so they know. All right. The next cohort will be, you know, yes, look at them saying hi, hi, hi. All right. The next cohort will be coming through by the grace of God next year. But you can join the waiting list. So go ahead right now to spinuniversity.org and you can join the wait list, all right? And we will email you when admissions or applications open, all right? Very important. And one last thing. If you're a speaker, you're a trainer, you're a coach, you're an author, you're a consultant or thought leader, and like Dr. Nee said, if you want to develop capacity, you're looking for accountability, you're wanting motivation, I've got my inner circle, All right. My inner circle provides all of that. It gives you coaching, mentoring, access to a powerful network of individuals that will help you, that will spur you on in the direction of the change that you seek. All you need to do right now is email info at samuelekundayo.com. Info at samuelekundayo.com. You can join the inner circle. It's very, it's not very expensive at all. All right. Uh, For a token every month, or you can actually subscribe for a whole year, you can join the inner circle. Just send us an email. We'll send you all of the details to join the inner circle. And guess what? When you join the inner circle, it is uh, you are going to have access to all our courses, all our masterclass, all the recordings of the Inner Circle for the last 12 months. Isn't that crazy? Literally, you get access to it all at once. So you don't want to miss out on that. Um, send us an email today. And by the way, Spin is free in case anyone thinks it is. Uh, uh, it is free. Yes, yes, it is entirely free. You can discover God's purpose for your life for free. And that's it from me today. God bless you all. Uh, Dr. Nee, over to you uh, to introduce yeah. Mary. <laughs> yeah, before we bring Mary on, this program um, was could only be successful. I'll actually bring Mary on. Okay, Mary can come on. Um, this program um, was only successful because we had a huge team of volunteers. We had a huge team of volunteers. So I want you guys to please help me appreciate all these volunteers. Yes. We have a lot of them. We say a big thank you to all these people who volunteered their time, all these people. These are volunteers on behalf of myself, um, Dr. Sam, Wendy Burns, and all the other speakers. We say thank you to all of you. We appreciate yes. all of you. I can't mention all of you by name. We had almost a hundred, over a hundred volunteers for this program. Thank you for your labor of love, 
without any pay we've not paid you guys but we've encouraged you and you've been a blessing to us and thank you thank so you. much for supporting this work and i also want to say shout out and a big thank you to the dream team this guy's amazing last year last year you know two years ago i started with tofumi um and most of you know her and um the team has gotten bigger now and uh, we have david we have mary we have Ope, we have praise we have brahmi these guys are amazing these are the ones that really helped us in coordinating a lot of the behind the scenes all sleepless nights you guys are amazing i love you guys i appreciate you guys you guys are family just consider that you guys are in my family mm -hmm. and so from the depth of my heart i say thank you all the emails all the text messages all the instagram posts all the social media all like we got hundreds and hundreds of emails there's no way i can do all of these things <laughs> this made it happen or did all the design so please if you thank need you to, yes uh, Yes, if you want, if you like all these designs, reach out to Okwe. Um, yeah, them. Yeah, them. Uh, please reach out to him. Tofumi, I think, is starting to do voiceover. Tofumi did all the voiceover. So if you you want a voiceover, um, you know, don't reach out to, to us and we'll connect you with Tofumi. Brahmi is a social media guru. David is a David is an amazing digital marketer. So please, yes. if you have any jobs, you want to organize a conference like this. If you want to organize a conference like this, all right, reach out to me. I'll connect you with David. He will make it work for you. And of course, Mary is our engine. All right. So I'm going to call on to Mary right now. And I'm Asian. Yes, Strong praise, editor. praise is our video editor. Praise did all the videos, all the introduction videos. Amazing guy. These guys they volunteer their time. Praise, I love you so much. Praise, you're an amazing guy. All right, so very um, committed. If you, if you like the videos and you want someone to help you design your own videos or edit your videos, reach out to me. I can guarantee these people they have my highest recommendation. All right, so I'm going to bring up uh, same Mary. email, same email to reach out to Dr. Nee about any of those. Yeah. Just email info at neeborea.com and Dr. Nee will be able to connect you with any of those people. All right. Yeah, and, and I want to say without those people, without our dream team and the volunteers, this conference would not have happened. If no. it was relying on my IT skills, these gentlemen know, the whole dream team no, it would never have happened. Right? <laughs> they laugh, you, you, you laugh, they they know, they know. But these these wonderful, incredible, amazing, amazing Mary, amazing Tofumi, all the gentlemen and the people in the background, you made this come about. Legacy happened simply because of you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, 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 wow. I think this is a point where I say that Legacy 2022 was a huge success. I mean, right from the very beginning, you know, when we started planning for this conference and, you know, when Dr. Nee shared, you know, the vision and all, you know, it was like, oh, Legacy 2022, how are we going to do it? How are we going to be for Look at us now, look at us now, look at us, amazing. Thank you so much to everyone who was a part of this or who, you know, um, has been an integral part of this, um, you know, event from the beginning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. And of course, to our volunteers, just like, um, you know, Dr. Sam, Dr. Nii and Wendy has said, without your commitment without your effort without your push you know i know how sometimes i come into the volunteers group and you know it's like i'm screaming the roof down and i'm like where is everybody why are people not posting where are you guys guys i'm sorry i'm sorry it was just on the job <laughs> it was on the job and i'm sorry about that okay but thank you so much thank you for all of your efforts. We see you, we appreciate you. Okay, so, um, you know, before Dr. Sam and Dr. Lee went off, they mentioned that, yes, we had the legacy challenge, um, you know, just before this, um, you know, conference started. So if you are um, in Change Makers um, International on Facebook, in fact, if you're not in that group, you should go and join that group. You should be in that group because that is, you know, that's where a lot of things happen. A lot of things that you probably not see outside because i see you know some of the comment people saying oh when was it i wasn't aware i'm sorry maybe because you were not 
you know, a part of you know change makers. Okay, so if you are not a part of the email, go to go to Facebook now and search Change Makers International. Just click on join and be a part of that group. I think we have about seven hundred strong, seven thousand. I mean, seven thousand strong members. So yes, you should be a part of that, you know, group. And, you know, we launched the Legacy Challenge. That's what we do every year. Last year we had it. And then also this time around, we had the Legacy Challenge. And for 15 old days, you know, we said, bring your write-ups, okay? Write articles, share stories, talk about leading for legacy. And then people began to write. Oh, my God. Oh my God, the, 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 you know, the, the kind of feedback and responses we got was so amazing. And yes, people wrote, and you know, at the end of the challenge, you know, our team went back, you know, went back to check because uh, the criteria for winning, you know, was, you know, your post had engagement, you had comments, you had likes, and the quality of what you were putting out, okay? So we're not just about the likes. I mean, during the challenge, we saw some people who would just send like, you know, a one sentence quote, and then they put hashtag legacy22. What was that? That was not what we wanted, please. That wasn't what we wanted. We were looking out for real stories that could inspire, you know, our audience. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to say that we have three winners, okay? Not to say that everyone who, uh, you know, put in an effort are not, you know, good at what they do. We really appreciate you. But yes, we had to, you know, you know, settle with those three persons who are our winners for this year's legacy uh, writing challenge. So uh, please, I'd like the team to help me bring out, let's, let's start with the third person, okay? Let's start with the third person. And did I mention that, you know, it's, just, it's not just an event that, you know, just came or just a challenge. There are prizes attached to, you know, uh, the, the writing. So the first, you know, the first person is going to go on with a sum of 350 um, US um, AUD, okay? 350 AUD dollars. Is not, that's not a joke. And then the second person's got two hundred and then the third person got a hundred but thank you so much this is just to appreciate you for your effort okay we just want to appreciate you for your effort and commitment you know to putting out those writers okay so i'll start with the third winner okay um in the third place we have kingsley captain is kingsley here i hope you're online if you're not here if i don't see your comments kingsley please i beg you don't send me your account number if if i'm not seeing your comments here don't send me your account number, okay? It's Kingsley here. I want to see. I your will comment. take it for Kingsley. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> I want to see your comment. I want you to say, I am Kingsley. Kingsley is here. Kingsley Captain, congratulations to you. Huge congratulations to you. You are a top prize winner. Congratulations to you. Congrats, congrats, congrats. I want to see the comment, okay? I want to see the comment bubbling with a lot of congratulations, okay? Okay, and then we have the second prize winner in person of Uzomechina Wisdom. Wisdom, congratulations to you. I hope that wisdom is also here. I've not seen the comment from these people. I hope that wisdom is here. Wisdom, where are you? Where are you, wisdom? Where are you? Come I am come wisdom here. today. I am wisdom. <laughs> so you can claim your prize, okay? Wisdom, congratulations to you. And the first... <laughs> How do I even say this now? Okay, Mary, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Okay, our first prize winner, you know, for this Legacy Challenge 2022 is, you know, so so let me let me just quickly say this before I mention the person. Because when I got the feedback, you know, from the person who collated the results, one of the things he said was, Mary, I read every content this particular person posted. You know, and if you follow that story, you would realize that um, a particular event had just happened in the life of this lady, not just, you know, an event. And, you know, for 15 days, she created stories that were in line with what had happened in her life. Ladies and gentlemen, our first prize winner is no other person than... I want the picture to be up before I mention the name. <laughs> I want the picture to be up. Itote Ifeda, your congratulations. Congratulations to you, Itote. If Itote is online, I think I've seen our comments. I think I've seen our comments. Congratulations to you, Itote Ifeda, your huge congratulations to you. 
Huge, huge, huge congratulations to you. If you followed our story in the Legacy Challenge, you realize that Itote just lost her father, you know, just before the Legacy Challenge. And then for 15 days, she began to share stories about the things that her father has done, linking it up with the, with the legacy her father has created. Honestly, I wouldn't... I wouldn't I was looking forward to this and I'm so you rich congratulations to you. So that um you know for that on the legacy challenge, please all the winners were going to reach out to you um definitely in the course of you know this week so that you can um claim your prize. Uh, Dr. Nee, Dr. Sam, you are back. Wendy, please say something. Um I want to say thank you to all the participants in the legacy challenge. Thank you for um sharing your hearts and being a part of the challenge and to the winners congratulations to every other person um you're still special and we appreciate the effort um hopefully we have another one next year um so it's our second edition so hopefully we have another one next year god bless you guys and if you're not a member of the change makers international um, um facebook, group, facebook. You join, you'll get a lot of value there all right dr sam what a yes. minute. wendy what a minute. Minute. i think and, uh, wait, it's over wow. yes we it is uh, I love a quote that John Maxwell says, and he says, never leave anything. Always put everything on the table. Give everything of yourself. And honestly, I feel like we have given yeah. everything of ourselves. It brings tears to my eyes, I think. I know how hard, um, Dr. Sam, you have worked with the team. Um, me uh beyond you know i don't think your wife and children know you at the moment because you've put in so many hours mm. um incredible and the team in the background wow we've left nothing on the table ladies and gentlemen you've watched we've we've fed you we've given you food uh, we've left nothing we've given you all that we have now get up and fight go That's for it nice. get up and fight fight one more day yeah. fight one more day and create your legacy it's in your hands that's the word wow that's it nothing else to say it's in your hands you got the message fight one more round fight one more day keep swinging keep at it it's in your hands and um, keep building the legacy keep building it every day so it's been a great pleasure once again thanks um, dr sam and wendy for doing this with me Thanks to every single person. Um, if I've not mentioned your name, my family, my friends, I think my mom has been here. She's not posting, but mom, I love you. My mother. I love you, mommy. <laughs> we love you. We love the mothers. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> my mother and father-in-law have also been watching. Uh, Chief and Mrs. Alani Brecon, thank you guys. Love you for all your support. My siblings, I think some of you as well. And my pastors, and um, Pastor Dinka, Pastor Astro. Love you guys. Thank you for all the support and that you've given me over the years. And we appreciate you. So, Dr. Sam. Um, yeah, shout out to my wife, my Dudu Shewa. She's been watching. She watched all the episodes. She kept giving me feedback. You should do this. You do that. Do that. Don't do that. Do that. <laughs> Love you, darling. And to my dad and my mom that were, that watch live as well, my pastors and all of those uh, people in New Zealand, mentees all over the world who've been a part of this. God bless you all. We love you all so much. This has been a dream to come true for us. I'm very emotional right now, and I don't know if I'll be able to sleep uh, because this has truly been a dream come true. Dr. Nee, I want to say a big thank you to you for making this. Uh, yes. You know, it's, yeah, it's one thing. It, like the, when, when uh, John Maxwell mentioned the picture of companionship, today my mind straight away went to you and wendy straight away i'm like yeah. what lord thank you for this wonderful companions because in, in, you know the, yeah there's that picture of the clock there is that picture of the compass but that picture of the companion just sums it up for me it, like it really does sum it up for me and i'm grateful and i'll forever be grateful to have you both on my team and i look forward to next year and many great things that god would have us do together in, in jesus mighty name Amen. Uh, you brought tears to my eyes. Um, wow. I have no words. I just think I often say to God in my quiet time, why are they working with me? Why did I get this blessing? Because I have been incredibly blessed to work with you both. And maybe that's part of my legacy. 
Thanks, Wendy. You want to make me cry too. Thank Love you, you guys. <laughs> Love you, everyone. Bye, everyone. See you next year. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs>